Crashing through the lies and disinformation, it's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Boy, I tell you, folks, these are interesting times. I'm pretty much office out of here in the morning. So I've been here getting ready, getting geared up, and then I'm back there in the control room uh, dealing with a lot of other irons in the fire as we prepare to launch this live worldwide broadcast. But I'll tell you this, uh, the fact that this broadcast is exploding in popularity is really only an indicator of how much trouble this culture is in that the general population of this nation and the world understands now that what we're talking about really is closer to reality than what mainstream media is pushing by a billion light years. And look, we're not perfect. We don't have all the answers, but we know this. The globalists are tyrants. They're coming after our freedoms. This is a very important broadcast today. First, I love to kick off with a John Bound report. Gun control rising as New World Order media dies. While mainstream media, the failed propaganda Goliath, desperately wheezes for air, swimming upstream in a raging river of American truth and relevance, the force of the New World Order's establishment mind control is getting bolder. With Justice Scalia on the bench, one of the few areas where the court actually had an inconsistent record relates to gun control. Sometimes the court upheld local and state gun control measures as being compliant with the Second Amendment, and sometimes the court struck them down. They say they believe the next time the court rules on gun control will make a definitive ruling. At this point, it should come as no surprise that government-engineered propaganda was legalized in the United States in 2013, slipped into the tyrannical bulwark NDAA of 2013 while America slept. Yeah, the same NDAA that gives the government the power to detain U.S. citizens suspected of terrorism indefinitely without charge or trial. And considering the fact that the establishment's number one target is domestic terrorists, labeled as constitutionalists or patriots or even documentary filmmakers that authorization is highly disturbing and they just took them away where re-education camps that's what they call it so it should come as no surprise that the puppets with their perfect hair and hubris filled blank teleprompter reading minds are being forced to ratchet up a full-on cannibalistic assault on their own deteriorating journalistic integrity we should spend more time listening to what others have to say and less focusing on the grammar what they say it with supporting mindless disinformation like this no, we can't be a slave for him. He got me appreciating nobody my way more. Hey, Donald, and they one that follows you gave us your reason to be president. And firing people like ESPN's recent firing of Kurt Schilling over the exercise over what is simply Schilling's free speech. The more this occurs, the more the disgust for mainstream media grows. Investors Business Daily writes, more information travels faster to more consumers than ever before. So why does a new survey show trust in media at rock bottom? Because so much more accurate information is available elsewhere. There is no incongruity in the fact that a new poll conducted by the Media Insight Project, a joint project of the American Press Institute and the Associated Press Center for Public Affairs Research, finds the American media's popularity way down with that of Washington politicians. With 2014 adults surveyed, only 6% expressed a lot of confidence in the press. And in its technological haste to sell meaningless swill through clickbaiting rather than focusing on what people truly want, real verifiable journalistic truth, social media and online journalism also created its own hyperactive click trap. Theinformation.com writes, Digital media companies are caught in the crap trap, mass-producing trashy clickbait so they can claim huge audiences and often higher valuations. But that model failed, heralded by mass layoffs. As the crow flies, the days of cable network media being the successful and reliable source of unfiltered information it once was in the archaic past will be as distant a memory as Brian Williams' career. John Bound for Infowars.com. There's two schools of thought. Um, one is they're gone. It just is really frustrating to be told we don't live in a patriot. 
patriarchy. The good old white days are over with. Ain't no more of them days, bro. You're bad insane. The only thing that's going to adjust their ideological uh, fixation is reality. All you people want to go to the street and complain. Oh, they got shot by the cops. But you don't want to go to Chicago and say, we're killing each other in droves. Millions of people get murdered in the streets. Look at Mao Zedong. Look at V.I. Lenin. There's your case study of socialism. Uh, you're a f***ing white male. You're a white man. Obama, Hillary Clinton, both of them, endorsed by Robert Byrd. Went to his funeral. Robert Byrd is a grand cyclops of the KKK. Look, for everyone that's out there spinning their little uh, New Year's toy in, in your reporter's face, and I've watched those clips, I'm horrified. As somebody who believes in free speech and as an, as an artist, because those people are going to be coming for me. Let's face it. It may not be tomorrow, but it's soon enough. Because I said the wrong thing on the wrong day because I was tired. Hey, that's not a That's not racist. I'm racist. The lack of tolerance of ideas and other points of view is the great Achilles heel of the social justice warrior move. They do not apply their philosophical bent across the board equally. Plain and simple, this right here. Nothing else, nothing else. Black, your skin color. It's never been great. You're all falsities. Well then, where are you You're gonna- all falsities. Why don't you go live somewhere where it's better? Why don't I go somewhere that lives somewhere? I would love to. You wanna pay for that? You wanna pay for me to get the out of this hole? No, you should, you should do it yourself this place you need no. to get out oh. you need to get out no i don't you need to get out i actually don't all right hey who wants to help me get this reporter out of here oh. i need some muscle over here you don't have to <laughs> oh. hey this dude just hey this dude just hey. Hey. i'm a tranny i'm a tranny i am not against immigration for immigrants never was my parents were immigrants <laughs> against illegal immigrants it's the same thing it is legal and illegal immigration is not the same thing. So the people you got to get through to is, is, is the people who don't have the little red book yet, who do care about humanity and do care about free speech. And you have to get them to understand how their participation in those They're systems. being inducted into a cult. Absolutely. And, and nobody wants to admit that they're being fooled. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us as we kick off another broadcast week. It is the 25th day of April 2016. We'll be here for the next four hours. Paul Joseph Watson will be hosting the fourth hour from London, England. We have Pastor Manning joining us to take your calls. Talk politics and news in the second hour. Always interesting, always inform informative, always thought-provoking and entertaining with Pastor Manning. I personally love listening to a show and watching a show. He's just a really great guy, really smart. Has street smarts, but also world smarts, but also political and religious smarts. Just an amazing guy. He's spiritually smart. So that is coming up. We have a lot of really important special reports I want to get to. Was Prince murdered by the Illuminati? Uh, a lot of evidence points towards it. John Bowne's done a report. That's what you call organized crime that isn't Italian. Is basically the Illuminati. People say, what is it? It's secret societies that engage in criminal activity and have systems of social control. I'm going to talk about that at the bottom of the hour and play that report. He did another really important report uh, dealing with New World Order defends its sale of baby parts as that expands. So they've gone from denying they're selling baby parts to just admitting it and saying how wonderful it is. We'll also get into Obama threatening Great Britain that if they leave the EU, that the U.S. will basically break its ties with them. So we've got the Chinese communist killers and the Pope and everybody else and, and, and all these dictatorships like Saudi Arabia. Oh, I'm sorry, they call them monarchies when it's a family dictatorship like North Korea. Excuse me, the monarchy of uh, Saudi Arabia. Threatening the U.S. not to elect Donald Trump because he's a nationalist. And then England... And the UK is being threatened that they're being screwed over by the EU that signs them on to all these debts that controls most of their laws and regulations. And Obama's been over there for days. So has Hillary. She hasn't been over there, but she's been on record telling them what to do, how to behave. This is global government. So that is some of what we're going to be breaking down as well today. 
There is a topic that I want to throw out here. Before we get into the latest on the big primary uh, situation coming up tomorrow, where Donald Trump is surging in all the polls in Connecticut, Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island. And by the way, he's going to need it because the ringer Kasich has now teamed up with Lion Ted, a Canadian. Nothing wrong with Canadians. It's just, you know, he's up there, you know, north by Alaska. Uh, we got Lion Ted, the, the uh, Royal Mounted Police Commander, the Mountie, riding around on his moose down here in Texas. There's nothing more Texas than a Canadian riding a moose down Congress Street in Austin, Texas, I'm here to tell you. He is all hat and all moose, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, he's a moose farmer. He's got uh, moose rancher, moose meat. I'm <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm really going over the deep end here today. They have announced that they are joining forces to combine their delegates. And then, of course, uh, Ted just had some more victories over the weekend. A couple more states where they had voterless victories, uh, where people appointed by the party leadership, they then decide uh, who the superdelegates are, and then I guess it just goes from there. Or the superdelegates for the party leadership decide who the delegates are. And, and of course, Rand Paul is going to be one of the superdelegates in Kentucky. And they're saying they're just going to give all the votes uh, to uh, Ted Cruz again there. And this is just really getting scary. And they're saying, oh, this is our system. Well, they've never really implemented it to that level. So we're going to be uh, going over that, the big steal in front of everyone. But if Donald Trump sweeps tomorrow and then sweeps coming up places like New Mexico and California and all those other Western states coming up in the next month or so. If he sweeps those and dominates those, still he will get the 1,237. So that's why Prevost and other Republican cats, other Republican bigwigs with those you-know-what eating grins on their faces are all over CNN, Fox News saying, hey, the same story over and over again. It's never been this way. The delegates always decide. The superdelegates always decide. And that's not true. And I have to just keep repeating this because they keep lying. In 1976, the Republicans changed it to basically let the party officials come in and take over delegates and steal elections. But just because you pass a rule that flies in the face of public elections and claim that you run the election system in this country, that will not stand up to real challenge in court because we have one person, one vote laws and we have taxpayer money spent on elections and you have held out for decades, even under this system that, that you've had, that it's one person, one vote and the people decide. You are con artist frauds and I'm calling you out Previs and all the rest of you. They were all over TV this weekend like a bunch of demonic parrots bleeding and blurping and chirping and squawking. That it doesn't matter what you say. doesn't matter what you say. We vote. We vote. We have the votes. We're the party officials. We're the party officials. We're the party officials. We vote. We vote. We vote. There's no popular vote. There's no popular vote. There's no popular vote. No popular vote. No popular vote. We may not even go with Kasich. We may not even go with Cruz. No, no. It might be Paul Ryan. Might be Paul Ryan. And then they start squawking over and over again. Party officials said. Party officials said. We decide, not you. Never was a vote. You're crazy. Over and over and over again. The same mindless talking points where these stupid politicos can hardly even say a sentence straight when it's a talking point, and they say it and get it out and then smile like 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 puppies that just did their first trick. And then, you know, kind of squirt on themselves like a puppy will do when you're petting it. Kind of, I got a treat. And then, like, pee on themselves. And, and I'm sorry to use that analogy, but that's what it looks like. Previs and, and, and Curly, uh, Hewland, and all the rest of them get up on TV and they say, with a smile on their face, oh, listen, it's always been like this. And it's just, he's a sore loser. And he's mad that the voters have spoken. This is voters. It's how it was voters. And then they smile. Look, Mommy, I lied. Look, a, a British psych warfare firm told me these lies and wrote out four or five lines, and I'm a big boy now. I go on TV, and I say my line like I'm in the kindergarten play. Meanwhile, I 
I wish Donald Trump <coughs> would do more of his Hillary Clinton impressions. Because it's just comedy gold. He's got great body posture. He knows how to pull it off. And I personally want to have a big lectern and, and, and put on a wig this week, guys. And I want to dress up like Hillary and actually take one of her speeches with a teleprompter. I, I guess we can rent one, load it up, and actually give real quotes she's given about, look, we're going to get the guns with executive orders, amen. Uh, we need to put men in fun camps. Uh, socialism is good. I mean, these are real quotes. And just show people the body language of, hello, I'm lying Hillary. It's good to see you. I'm glad you're here. We're going to give you lots of free stuff. And when you actually see Trump do that, that's what they look like when Hillary and Obama go up and just turn. But Hillary's even worse. She just looks at a teleprompter, reads a line, turns to the next line, turns to the next line. <coughs> and it's pure garbage. Speaking of Hillary's cough, she says it's allergies. And you know what? Maybe it is because I have a mold allergy and it's been raining for months here in Austin almost every day. I, I was up almost all night, and it is mold because I went for a hike this morning, and it's it's the mold, and I'm just going to have to stop hiking when the mold count is so high because I feel like I have fire ants in my bronchioles right now, so excuse me for the uh, coughing here today. Not good. I had a huge coughing fit over breakfast with my children this morning as well. My son asked me, he said, Dad, are you turning into Hillary Clinton? And I said, maybe. About to dress up like her. I can even hack and cough. And it won't be acting because I, I'll really be hacking and coughing when I do the Lion Hillary imitation. So that's coming up today as well. But I, I want to kick off a topic for listeners first and kind of a thematic thing, I think, really of the week and, and really of the month because we need to focus on this. We need to really... In my humble view, let me know what you think. Look at the globalist plans for us and why they're engineering a global collapse and why that makes it basically inevitable. And how that ties in to this little grouping of articles. Beyonce invokes urban terrorism in new video, veiled encouragement of violence, typical of pop star. There's no veiled encouragement but but i'm not mad at my writers for saying that i mean they're trying to be conservative but when a woman's running around blowing things up beating things up attacking saying she hates men and saying she hates police it's clear she's trying to get young people to go out and act like this and do this and this ties into what the establishment wants and how they want to treat people to behave and it ties into the cia and other big think tanks and foundations, will you guys get me some lung cleanse? I forgot to use that, thank you. And what they're up to. And that ties into this Michael Snyder article. We should get him on about this this week because I want this to be th really, again, a theme we cover. Unhappy America, will the United States collapse due to an internal societal meltdown? All great nations eventually fall, and the United States is not going to be any expectation, any exception. So that's coming up. We're going to be talking about will the republic survive what do the globalists plan to replace it with? Can we defeat this new planetary dark age that's being introduced and brought into place uh, by design? Stay with us. I'm Alex Jones. This is the Info War. A song about uh, Ted Cruz coming down from Canada. He talked to his team of huskies as he mushed on. And he worked with old Kasich, the Republican insider, to try to torpedo the popular vote and arrogantly went on television and told you that Voterless elections were normal and cool and okay because he said so. By the way, do you guys have any luck getting Watson to pop in? No luck? His Britannic Majesty's not answering the phone? I know that he's uh, hosting the show in the fourth hour. I really wanted to get him to pop in sometime before he comes on today, maybe the last 15 minutes of that hour, so that our main audience, because some stations obviously don't care the fourth hour, it's, it's newer, to get into how they're banning... All sorts of British flags. 
the King George flag, how they're banning cities, celebrating St. George Day, where St. George kills the dragon. That's like George Washington chops down the cherry tree, saying it's hurtful to have any British culture. That's in the UK Express. <laughs> I mean, look, look, see, see, mommy and daddy's hurtful too, see. Any Western culture must be erased, it's evil. And once the globalists have set the precedent to do that, the sky's the limit. But, but, but I digress. What's this really all about? That is ripped off from Rush Limbaugh. I don't rip really anything off from him but that. I think I'm better than him, though. Look, I mean, it's all on the wrist. Kind of. All right, I'm going to stop. U.S. repeals propaganda ban spreads government-made news to Americans. Remember that out of Foreign Policy, the Washington Post, 2013. Remember that, little baby? Well, if you want to understand what's happening with Beyonce and all of her riot and attack the police videos and, hey, girls, hate your men and run around and baseball bat things, she's literally being financed by psych warfare experts who want to make sure your kids go out and engage in behavior that gets them put in juvenile, which is their new college training to be criminals. And then by the time they get out of high school, they spend a few years in prison and they catch HIV, hepatitis, if they're lucky. Uh, if they're not lucky, they get shot on the street in Chicago that had the highest crime rate in the world until last year. They doubled that, according to the Associated Press, with the crime numbers uh, this year. Double the previous record. And, of course, that is where everybody's so cool and sings Beyonce songs in the streets. And I told you, we have witnessed people. Pat Riley's witnessed it. Other people I've talked to have witnessed it. Uh, and, and I said, why don't you videotape it? And he said, well, my wife didn't want to be attacked. I talked to this other fellow, and he said, man, I just wanted to get out of there where black youth, I'm talking 12, 13 years old, come into city parks now and sing the Beyonce song and then say, crackers, get out of here, black power. And it's equivalent to the Klan, you know, running around the 50s or 60s or something. But they think it's okay, just like the Klan did, because the, the dominant culture is telling them do it. And, but they're being set up so that everybody hates each other, divide and conquer. It's so sad. So I'm going to cover this and how they're trying to engineer the collapse of society. This is only one part of it. It's, it, it's Again, first she's like, go out for the cops in the last video of the Super Bowl sponsored. Now the new one pushed by MTV and others is women hate your men. See, they're, they're hitting every angle of it. Can we pull up the hateful faces of her in the uh, Super Bowl video where she just walked around like someone had murdered her child or something? And again, this is just to have the clash of civilizations it is so transparent that is coming up and it ties into unhappy America. Will the United States collapse due to an internal societal meltdown? I'm going to cover that in the next segment. Uh, briefly, folks, you, you hear a lot of companies out there advertising storable foods. And some of them I'm sure are great. I bought from a lot of them. I've had some of them as sponsors. But I went with my Patriot Supply a few years ago because there was a nexus point between two different numbers. The highest quality but also a very affordable price. Very clean, wholesome food that I personally chose for my family. And I'm even getting more now here at the office because they drop ship it uh, with InfoWars Select that allows us to offer prices even below what their contracts are with their other distributors. And that's just, I drive a hard bargain. I'm a capitalist. I give you and myself high quality food at the very lowest price you're going to find at the normal rate. It's 5 to 10% below my patriot who we also sell at infowarsstore.com because for whatever reason some people want to buy something that's more it's still a great deal we only run this twice a year it's the mega sale get 30 to 40 percent off infowars select storable food and it's infowars select brand at infowarsstore.com off the retail price all Infowars select foods have a shelf life 25 years and are made in the usa food prices are up and going up around the world infowarsselect.com infowarsstore.com announce here's your new leader just like oh we never had one person one vote oh no 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 the party appoints both democrat and republican party appoints who the candidate is so you can then vote from the two choices maybe i mean who knows what's going on there so the journey into abject slavery uh, is accelerating. The good news is people are waking up. The good news is many times in history when governments try to have a tyrannical takeover like this, if the people organize and stay focused, they can defeat it.
The problem is the British learned conquering India and conquering much of Africa and, and uh, North America and many other areas that how they would control populations is through balkanization. And that's why I, I, I harp on divide and conquer the great game uh, because that's what they're doing. And that's what the CIA is funding. That's the weaponized media, the weaponized culture. They told you three years ago, Congress passed a law saying the CIA and other agencies, other agencies from the Department of Energy to the Department of Education, uh, right down the line, they are engaged in high tech Hardcore mind warfare. And so I'm going to be breaking all of this down because this isn't something you can debate. It's on the table. You're being targeted. I've studied it. I know what they're doing. You can study it. You can learn it. And then you turn on Fox or CNN and you're like, oh my gosh, that is high-tech deceptive propaganda that was seen as immoral to be used in World War I and World War II, and in almost all cases, our government would not even use it fighting the Japanese and the Nazis. They said it's too dangerous. These techniques will be brought back home. Now, ladies and gentlemen, they are using stuff that they've used around the world, the most hardcore garbage at point-blank range in the public schools, on the television, at the colleges, at the corporations. It's so incredible. And they admit they're doing it. That's what's crazy. And then you know what the government's agenda is when you turn it on. And by the way, it's been going on forever. Since the 70s, every father role model was a weak, fat, stupid, slovingly sloth who sat in front of the television. Every real and just except for maybe gun smoke but 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 by the 70s they phased it all out and then by the 90s it was gangster hip hop kill each other that was the new normal and then now it's women hating men and 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 heterosexuals are bad this is all weaponized culture to destroy you and your family and it's all declassified that's what's crazy that's what's dangerous that's what's over the top so I want to break that down in a moment uh, speaking of the mega sale I mentioned earlier, A, everybody needs high-quality storable foods in these uncertain times, or you're insane in my view. B, these are the highest-quality storable foods at the most affordable lowest prices you're going to find, period. We've gone out found the best deals. And then finally, the small profit we make on this, we hope by being the most competitive we become the biggest sellers out there, which we're starting to become just like we've done with so many other things, that we're able to fund our operation, a very expensive news operation to run with our reporters, our crew, everything we do. So know you're getting the best high-quality, storable foods, very affordable prices, and funding the tip of the spear in the InfoWar, powered by My Patriot Supply. Their full catalog, full specials are at InfoWarStore.com. But right next to it is the exact same food made on the same dates of the same super high quality, fresh, made you know every week. I mean, this stuff's being made as fast as they can churn it out. And that's the great part. No weight, no nothing. 30 to 40% off. We only do this twice a year on the retail price of all InfoWars Select storable food, InfoWarsStore.com. All InfoWars Select foods have a shelf life of 25 years and are made in the USA. Food prices are going up around the world, and now is the time to start getting prepared. Get 30 to 40% off all InfoWars Select storable food at InfoWarsStore.com for a limited time while supplies last. We will have to pull this special as soon as we run out of supply. Yeah, once they start running down and they don't allow themselves to get behind, then the price will go back to the regular cost. And by the way, the folks at My Patriot are the people that supply a lot of the other groups out there. I mean, they're the big boys. They're the Patriots. They're the experts. And you get... The full spectrum at their already great prices at InfoWarsStore.com. You can shop and compare. InfoWars Select is show. I found a loophole to get around it, to be able to do normally 5 to 10%, even below what they are, is our normal retail. They already have a great deal. And then we can occasionally have super sales. And believe me, there's been complaining by other people about this. Sorry, that's the way it is in free market. Yes, I'm very aggressive. That's how we operate. I'm a capitalist. Get used to it, everybody. That's how I operate. And our listeners love it as well. 
InfoWarsStore.com. That said, you can also on everything else at InfoWarsStore.com, all the other products, doesn't count for the food, 10% up, 10% uh, when you sign up for auto ship, and when you get orders of $50 or more, free shipping. And that's on Survival Shield Nation Iodine X2. That's on Lung Cleanse. By the way, I talk all the time, and then I'm going to stop plugging. I talk all the time about how I forget to take my own nutraceuticals. And then when I finally take them all every day, the results are dramatic. I mean, I look 15 years younger than I looked 10 years ago. I mean, I was burnt out working 16 hours a day, not taking care of myself. Not even depressed, but just in war mode against the global, so I didn't care about myself. And it has been a long march losing 70 pounds of the 100 pounds I gained, roughly. It's like 99 pounds. But it is just, I am so muscular, so healthy, have so much energy, so aggressive. I am more focused and just, it's just, it's, it's amazing. And it is the nutraceutical, Super Mel Vitality, X2, Survival Shield, Nason Iodine. Uh, it is all the products. And, and, and there I am for days coughing. And I'd run out, you know, six months ago at home with my bottle of lung cleanse. And I went, wait a minute, I've been coughing from mold. I can barely stay on air. And I went, bring me a bottle of lung cleanse. I did five shots. The cough is gone. Incredible. That's real. This is thick essential oil, folks. Other brands that you get at, you know, places like Walgreens or Whole Foods aren't bad, but they'll have like three herbs and some alcohol in them. This thing's got dozens and dozens of things in a concentrated oil. Only problem is you use it five or six times, you got to take the cap out in hot water and wash it out. Yeah, that's the only problem is it clogs because it's so, it's so thick. My, I mean, what is my problem? That's what I want to say to you. I grew up eating a multivitamin my mom tried to shove down me every morning that was a horse pill and I hated and gave me a stomach ache. I'm sure it helped me. I grew up being, you know, being called a wimp, basically, you know, if I didn't want to, you know, go deer hunting if I had a fever. And, I, and that's good. I'm glad my dad was, you know, tough on me. I mean, he marched me up mountains when I had a fever and stuff, all sorts of stuff. Uh, but I just never got into nutraceuticals. And even when I started taking them and having some result, I just didn't do it religiously. Here I, here I was for the last week. Off and on with the mold, off the chart, it's just daily raining here. We're having floods all over Texas. There's just mold everywhere, mushrooms everywhere, just clouds of it. Everybody's coughing and hacking. And I'm like, I have a product that I know works great for me. And, 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 the, and that we formulated with Dr. Group to be the best out there, lung cleanse, InfoWarsLife.com. Okay, I'm done. Plug it. It's just this is how we fund the operation as well. DNA Force is back in stock. Supermail will sell out in the next few days. That's a problem. Won't be back in for a few weeks. The good news is super female is basically the same formula. I tend to think it works better, but it varies on, the, on your physiology. So the little secret is we don't sell very much super female, and it's just as good. It's just as good. Anthroplex is coming back in in a few days. That sold out. All right, I'm done. Uh, it's also key to support our local AM and FM affiliates and to... Become a sponsor, support their sponsors, send them 100 bucks. Whatever the case is, this is a war. And it's so vital that the information you're about to hear get out because you're not going to hear it anywhere else, okay? World Net Daily covers it. Daily Caller covers some of it. Drudge links the most hardcore stuff. That's why they have, you know, Pentagon meetings about what do they do about Drudge and White House meetings openly. Because all he's doing is linking to legislation or videos or things they don't want you to see. Like Judicial Watch puts out a lawsuit, gets the documents that the CDC's own memo says, TB spreading all over the U.S., drug resistant, we're killing our kids, it's horrible. We write an article about it, he links to it. That is sensational news. No one else did a story, even though this came out on Friday, we did it by Saturday, drugs linked to it. And then I look today, there's a couple internet articles copying us, but, but, but you watch. Tomorrow, it'll finally be forced a little bit into mainstream media. But that's the value of Infowars.com and DrudgeReport.com is that we're just common sense. And if they're having voterless victories where they cancel elections in now nine states that have gone to Ted Cruz, and he's stealing the delegates from states that did go to Trump, and they're sitting up there, telling us that this is normal, I'm not putting up with it. 
And we're there to say, hey, you're normal thinking that it's one person, one vote. You're normal. Two plus two equals four. You're normal. MSNBC with promos saying your kids don't belong to you is freakish totalitarianism. People saying the word mother or father or he or she is hateful are control freak cultists taking over. They're the freaks. It's okay that you're a woman attracted to men. It's okay that you're a man attracted to women. We don't hate people. You're trying to conquer us. You're trying to rape our culture. You're trying to rape our sexuality. You're trying to rape our children's minds and, and, and tell us what bathrooms we can use and get in our business and dominate us and see what you can get away with. And they have manuals and training manuals. It's in my film Endgame 1.5. It's free online where d d d d Dr. Coleman goes over all the university memos saying we're going to promote homosexuality, then asexuality, and then just the end of reproduction altogether. They know what they're doing. They have a plan. They're carrying it out. And the theme is the collapse of civilization. It's a designed unevenly distributed collapse where the general culture has its lights and power and infrastructure turned off. The elites use the infrastructure and our tax money to build armored compound offshore and rural command bases. And then they are tax exempt above the law with super technology. And you go, Alex, that's the Hunger Games. I've been saying that for 20 years. The Hunger Games is the dystopia they're building with game shows and hype controlling everyone. That's the type of world that the UN Biological Diversity Assessment 1996, not the one online, that's the summary. I went and got it at UT Law Library and I have the shots in my film Road to Tyranny where it shows we're going to have rural communities, one-tenth the population, with, 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 with rural gladiatorial games and human sacrifice like the Aztecs, and we're going to have peacekeeper systems with rapid deployment aircraft systems that go and suppress the, 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 the rural humans, and that we will then be in high-tech command bases. That's out of the UN plan, people! I made Endgame before the Hunger Games, before the books were written. I didn't get it out of fiction. That's fiction imitating their plan. It isn't funny. And they're planning a nuclear war with Russia and China, just as Joel Skousen has said. He's got high level, that guy used to run basically the, the entire conservative wing of the Republican Party. They plan to do that and use the strike to take out the people. Most of us. They're then going to emerge out of it and set it up. They got the region set up, everything. They mean, these people, the, suddenly they don't care that nuclear reactors, 93% of them, according to the International Atomic Energy Agency, look it up, are leaking. They don't care because they're going to have a nuclear war. And they think that the fallout's going to dissipate and that they've got different high-tech systems and chelation systems that are going to let them... Uh, somehow detoxify themselves. That, that's the word. They've got underground seed banks, 14 emergency animal human banks. Uh, they've got it all. Yeah, that's an old article, and, and they whitewash it. 2011, radioactive leaks found at 75% of U.S. nuke sites, and it, it's actually up to 93% as of last year in an International Atomic Energy Agency report, but let's just say it's 75 they turn the, the alarms off all over the U.S. now. They just go, oh, it was scaring the public that the alarms were going off that were under federal law. So the regulators said they gave us a waiver, kind of like all these big companies get waivers from the you know, uh, coal restrictions, but, it, but, but nobody else does, bankrupting their competition. Oh, we got a waiver on the alarms. The alarms don't go off. I mean, used to in Southern California and all over where they have, if there was a little leak, you'd hear for hours and they don't. Uh, you know, we're letting you know there's been a small leak. It's contained. We believe it's not a problem, but uh, you may want to move out of the area. Uh, we're giving you reports of which way the wind is going on the local radio. Not anymore. No, no, no. They're turning the seismographs off and stuff, too. See, you pay for all this surveillance and you pay for all these EAS alert systems, but then they don't tell you. 
when there's a 65,000 spike in reported radioactivity after tritium leaks. Uh, let's scroll back up there. Put it back on screen for me. Thank you. At Indian Point Nuclear Power Station. Yeah, look at that article. In New York City, Zero Hedge, and it links to mainstream news articles. 65 folks. They had some isotopes up 127,000 times what they were supposed to be in cattle. Two months after Fukushima, all over the U.S. and milk and grass, depending on the isotope. And they just came out and said, you know what? We're raising it and saying that level's safe. <laughs> oh, it's so loving and liberal. So we sent our own reporters out, Jakari Jackson and others. They got 15 to 20 times safe levels. And then the media on the West Coast spun it and said, well, we did send the Army out and... The San Francisco Chronicle, a month after Jakari went out there, said, yeah, reporters went out and showed this and scared everybody. Guess what? The Army went out to the exact sites, found what InfoWars found, but they say it's safe. First, people said, oh, Jakari doesn't know with that field monitor. How do you know? It was certified. We bought two of them, two different companies, certified, tested, and we were correct. We were correct. Today is Monday, April 25th, and here's some of the top headlines. Donald Trump is surging in the polls in three states with upcoming primaries, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, and Rhode Island. His desperate opponents, John Kasich and Ted Cruz, have finally admitted their campaigns are now just about stopping Trump. The two have made an alliance to block the GOP frontrunner by coordinating their campaigns with each other in upcoming states. This proves that both candidates are only staying in the race to defend the GOP establishment against Trump. Overall, the 2016 GOP primary turnout across the country is up over 60% compared to 2012, with over 8 million more voters showing up to the polls. In other news, a new report reveals that NASA has doubled the estimated sea level rise from 1880 to 1980 in comparison to a 1983 study. The agency apparently has a history of tampering with climate data to make the Earth appear much hotter than it actually is. NASA and other government agencies will likely receive substantial budget increases for pushing the global warming narrative, which expands the size and scope of the government. For more news, visit Infowars.com. This is Kit Daniels reporting. They had a Manhattan Project. Billions of dollars were spent. Over 150,000 people were involved, and they kept it totally secret until they dropped A-bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I've called the New World Order Project the Manhattan Project squared. And Hillary Clinton came out a few months ago and said, Internet warfare and the future of cybersecurity has been basically a secret Manhattan Project. Well, folks, the New World Order is... A technological elite going underground, literally, but also metaphorically, and building a breakaway civilization. And, and, and I know I say this every day, because if you don't understand that, you understand nothing. And if you don't understand, they're engaged in domestic propaganda to end the family, to degrade men, to make sure women are all alone, and to raise taxes selectively to bankrupt middle-class new wealth, and to make the poor into, uh, basically dependent on the system, where you're working but also get supplemental welfare. That's their dream, working a menial job with a supplemental food stamps and government surveillance and control. So you're working, but you owe your soul to the company store. This is what they call slavery with a velvet glove. It's worse than slavery. Because you don't know that you're really a slave. You go work, you get a supplemental payment, you're under their system. And then they can bring in, hey, you got to take the shots or we're not going to give you your welfare. You got to take the shots or we're not going to give you your tax credit, as they're now doing in Europe and, 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 and Australia. And whatever's done there is then brought here. This is all social engineering where no matter what you do, no matter how much money you make, you're going to have to go into their system unless you're a globalist who has that chip, just like Rockefeller talked about, the kiss my rear end chip, where you're above the law. And now they announce it. The UN, the big brokerage firms, the big banks are all getting diplomatic corporate immunity and tax exemption. This is the new royalty. And then Beyonce has a job. The NFL's admitted halftime all of it's paid. Billions, not millions or hundreds of millions. Billions it's coming out from different agencies. It was hundreds of millions from the Pentagon. Billions goes to the NFL. Globally, it's soccer. Billions go to that. 
But the globalists are trying to take that over right now. That's why they're now infiltrating that group and indicting them. And here it is in foreign policy. U.S. repeals propaganda ban, spreads government-made news to Americans, legalizes deception. And that's in the 61 languages that they put it out in. And so when you see Beyonce running around saying she hates men, blowing things up, beating up cars, smashing out windows with horrible, ugly looks on her face, teaching young people to be filled with rage. Can we Google Beyonce Super Bowl and just, just click that image in the images of how hateful she looks? And then the new one, again, she's running around doing all this. And the old video attacking the police. People say, well, what are you for the police? It's the government-funded run TV channels, Viacom, MTV, financing a woman to act like a psychopath who looks like she's on steroids, teaching women this is feminine. So that you run out and burn things and hit people and attack people and get shot. This is cultural death. Oh, here, be drug dealers. Oh, here, talk like this. Here, don't use normal English. Here, be a loser. You know, segregate yourself. Whatever. And it's not just black people. They're targeting everyone with this weaponized evil. She's just one slice. The, the comedies, the shows, the attack on the families, the, the attack on the bathrooms, the attack on male and female. And then it's chemically happening to us as well. This is what they want. When you watch sitcoms and dramas, and I know our audience knows this, but warn your friends and family. When you watch the brainwashing, it's targeting you. And it's literally CIA. You want to know what the globalists think of you? Take one look at... What they're pushing in Hollywood, what they're pushing in pop culture, what they are pushing on young people who they think are young and impressionable and basically helpless. This is the corrupting of the youth. You have this sickening nanny state that says kids can't have dodgeball or can't have tag or can't even run now uh, at most, quote, recesses from first grade right through 12th grade. But we're going to have Beyonce and Kesha and every other one of these pop stars devil worshiping and occult rituals and attacking the police and attacking uh, men and baseball batting and blowing stuff up with a bunch of little girls skipping behind her. That This is the fun. This is what we do. We have power. We have worth. Not write a book. Not nurture your family. Make dinner. Not love your children, not be a doctor, be a scientist, be an aid worker, not, you know, don't go join the Salvation Army, uh, don't be a painter, don't, don't be loving to those around you because charity starts at home. No, be a swollen, spoiled brat woman worth over $100 million funded by the globalists running around looking like she's on steroids, looks like she's a linebacker, beating everything with baseball bats and blowing things up. This is what they're doing to your children. Let me tell you something. My children are, I don't want to say sheltered, but they have friends, nice friends, nice families. But my oldest daughter, 11 years old, comes home singing Beyonce songs. And it's because they hear them at their friends' houses. They hear them on the radio. Uh, they hear them if a nanny or something's driving them or something. I'm like, hey, don't listen to that. It just gets in. It just gets to your kids. And the thing is, it's designed to absolutely ruin their lives on purpose, and it's declassified. This is an illegitimate government that thinks we're through, that thinks we're over, that thinks they can cancel elections like the Communist Party and just have the inner party appoint who the president is. We're one step from that with what the Democrats and Republicans are doing. But it is always dark as before the dawn, and there is a huge awakening. There is a large cadre a remnant of people, I'd say 20% of the population that really knows what's going on and is now getting motivated to take action. And if you reach out to the other 80%, maybe 30% of that 80% is somewhat awake but passive. Reach out to them first and, and explain. This is history. This is fun. This is exciting to be involved. It's exciting to take a risk because the greater risk down the road is doing nothing. But see, they don't ever want you to have an animating contest. They don't ever want you to have your medal tested in business or life or anything else. 
because they want you just to be totally scared and, and ostracize yourself from society and just have a relationship with the television and just have a relationship with the mainstream media and just have a relationship with your professor on your third degree hoping you finally get a job somewhere. It's all designed to leave you helpless and alone and I love you. I love humanity. I love myself. I love my children. And I love this world that God gave us and I want my children to grow up with your children in a fabulous future. Quite frankly, I want those life extension technologies for myself. And I want people to be able to live longer so they can grow out of their decadence and come together and really enjoy some amazing fruits of the technology that God gave us through our mind. Truth is, we're very special creatures. We're, we're builders, we're master builders, we're master architects. And I know I'm going to see videos going, Joe's just secretly put out an Illuminati code word. No, I didn't secretly do that. I just said that on air. It's not an Illuminati code word. It's in the Bible. The Illuminati has stolen all that nomenclature and iconography and is using it for themselves. They don't have the rightful birthright to it. We're going to break here in just a few seconds. I'm Alex Jones. Please stay with us. So know that. These globalists that want to play God with their genetic engineering and all their attacks on the family. It's because they hate everything God made. They come to kill, steal, and destroy. I mean, I've always been a Christian and my faith has just gotten from strong to 100%. When I've studied the New World Order, you study these people, they hate God's creation, they hate goodness, they hate decency, they hate your children happy and healthy, smiling, they hate good families, they hate good food. They hate healthy plants and animals. They hate everything that's wholesome. You study the New World Order, they'll go out of their way and even hurt themselves to hurt you. But good people have a blind spot. We don't know why child molesters want to rape five-year-old kids or why people want to kidnap women and torture them to death. Sounds horrible, doesn't it? Grabbing some woman, keeping her alive for a month, torturing her. But these people, all that are into this, they like the same thing. And I, I've interviewed top serial killer psychiatrists and people that have in, in, interviewed them, the top people here on the air, and they say, no, they're all devil worshipers. They all believe they're possessed by demons, and they all have a satanic cosmology, and they're all tortured and only happy when they're doing bad things. And I've said to these top scientists, uh, I said, well, does this make you believe in God? We ought to have something back on. It's been years. And they go, yeah, it has made me believe in God. I've seen things with these psychopaths, they say that, isn't human. I've talked to a lot of top psychiatrists and psychologists as of late the last few years and some research I've been doing and uh, none of them are atheists and a lot of them used to be liberal atheists. They're not anymore. Not after what they've seen working in the state hospitals, what they've seen on the street, what they've seen in families. There's a lot of stuff going on, folks, is what I'm getting to. And you, you can only go so far denying the spiritual that's happening. And now the world government, the announcement of the end of cash, and mother and father is bad, and, and, and the assault, and the CIA admitting they're involved in domestic propaganda, and all these Kesha and Beyonce and all these hip-hop people funded and rock people to be anti-family, anti-police, calling for revolution, but not a revolution against the Federal Reserve or the New World Order. No, just go randomly blow up some police cars. The new Beyonce video, hate your man, go out with a baseball bat and beat up everybody's cars and have little girls skipping behind you. Creating a Jezebel spirit injected into little girls to just be hateful and crazy and unhappy. Make sure they die alone. This is what's happening. And so there's a Michael Snyder article up on Infowars.com. Unhappy America. Will the United States collapse due to internal social meltdown? All great nations eventually fall. The United States is not going to be any exception. The article is excellent and breaks down all the numbers. I want to go over some of these in the next hour with Pastor Manning. Maybe hold him a little bit in the next. And then take your phone calls coming up about 40 after or so with your questions or your comments. But specifically on the topic, you can bring up other stuff, but humor me. They're engineering a collapse under Cloward and Piven, Agenda 21. I mean, that's admitted. They say post-industrial world, negative growth. You can't have a car and air conditioner, but the elite can live in palaces. This is how they sell their new crony capitalist system where we get communism. They're offshore and exempt. It's very devilish. Where Obama goes down and says, now multinationally needs to be free market, but in your country needs to be communist. You're slaves, and then the multinationals get the goods, like China. 
New articles out about the Apple factories are the worst in the world. Forced drugging, forced abortions, 17-hour work days. The people live in cardboard boxes, <coughs> and they're getting the robots ready to replace them, they admit. And the elites say, life was always cheap. Now you're seen as dirt. And then they put out media and propaganda to make us as stupid as possible and to fight with each other at every front so that none of us organize against the globalist takeover. There is a technotronic technocracy warfare grid taking over in their words. In their words. And if you don't see that and know what's going on, then you want to be destroyed. You've been put into a spiritual trance, a great delusion that the Bible talks about. And Pastor Manny can speak to this more than I, but I'd like him to speak along these lines. I didn't tell him what he's coming on about today. He's got topics I'm sure he wants to cover. I like fresh, open discussions. Pastor Manning, of course, uh, has his own syndicated show and TV show, and he does a great job there in Harlem. He helped with others but led the charge. They're in the belly of the base. It's easy to fight a gangster chieftain, in my view, is what he is, like Al Sharpton from Texas. But he did it in, in Harlem, where he's been for decades. Atla.org, A-T-L-A-H.org. This is a real church. This is a real leader. He didn't like to say that by himself. That's what he's doing. He's there feeding the kids food in the morning and at lunch and at night, hundreds and hundreds of people a day. He's got the church going, you know, church services seven days a week. He's got the people out in the community. He's exposing the New World Order. He's politically involved because the First Amendment says Congress shall make no law restricting or prohibiting the free exercise of religion. Let me say it properly. Congress shall make no law prohibiting the free exercise of religion or prohibiting it or freedom of the press. And it goes right down the line. We can put it on screen for folks. But Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. That's the actual quote. Or the press, or the right to petition the government. Or to, it's all there. And that's what a preacher's supposed to do is defend the people. But instead, he's one of the only black preachers out there. We also have Reverend Childress and others on. Who will actually go out and point out that 52% of black people since 1974 never got out of their mama unchopped up talk about slavery you get chopped up and then sold off your body parts to for women's collagen can you imagine if they had a movie like roots showing a black person being chopped up and their body being sold and 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 and, and the two percent of slave owners eating their flesh boy there'd be there'd be all sorts of riots in the street even though it was 200 years ago or 100 doesn't matter see they'll eat your babies and smear their your baby's fat on their faces and you won't do anything because MTV and Jesse Jackson didn't say it. And I'm not getting off on black people here, but it's black people that have gotten the special treatment and the testing on in the last 150 years. But now everybody gets it. And so you, you, you want to know what's coming? Look what's been done to the black community. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm ranting here, Pastor Manning. I want to get into Obama, the election. But what about the organized collapse of society, the collapse of the family? You've heard what I've been ranting about, sir. Is it accurate? Is it inaccurate? What can you add, my friend? And then tell us some of the other topics you want to get into in the next, I guess you can probably go 20 minutes to the next hour with us. It's always go to you late. Well, I can tell you, Alex, first of all, it's always great to be on your broadcast. Uh, but you're 100% spot on with respect to the collapse of the family, what's happening with technology, people being very comfortable with their widescreen televisions and their internet systems, their iPhones, and all of that that just brings everything to them and they have to do nothing. And the other thing is that perhaps I might want to add to what you're talking about with respect to the, you know, the way this new world order and the way the demons as well are also trying to uh, take over the world and destroy the family is that they have a way, if you watch the media, if you watch the news, the mainstream dung hit media, I refer to them as, if you watch them very carefully, they kind of tell you, we're going to do everything for you. All we need is just for you to watch us. We're going to take care of everything. You know, we're going to make the world right. We'll, we'll see to that this happens the right way. Or we'll chase this villain or that bad person. And so what happened is you've gotten people falling into a sense of complacency where in, in years gone by and decades gone by, people will be up in arms over what they see with the evils going on in our society. But there's this subliminal, if you will, very subtle message now in the media in particular, and politicians in general, is that we're going to take care of the matter. Don't worry about anything. We'll make sure it gets taken care of. But it really doesn't get taken care of. What happens is that matters continue to get worse. I mean, if you look at the abortion issue, you just made mention 52% of the, of the black or African-American children have not made it into the world. They've been chopped up prior to that. 
And, and what's worse, I mean, that's, that's about as bad as it can get. But the after fact is that their bodies are used for all kinds of other things. But there's been a sustained, if you will, unemployment among black or African-American men, Alex, over the past decade at the rate of 54%. And that number didn't change once the long-legged Mac Daddy, Barack Hussein Obama, became the president. You would have thought uh, that he would have been able to do something over the past seven years to increase a law of the employment, the unemployment of blacks. But Alex, here's some, some facts. Prison population has increased under Obama. Shootings in the streets such as Trayvon Martin, which you deserve to be shot. It was a thug, Michael Brown, another thug. Uh, the, the killings in Chicago, Alex, of, of black youth uh, from three years old to 24 years old goes on routinely. I mean, you would think that the world would wake up and say, wait a minute, something's wrong. They've got an alleged black president, but yet the very hometown from which he comes, killings Murders, shootings, violence, Chicago, robbery, Just so the number to back worse. you up, Pastor Manning, Chicago had the highest crime rate in the world uh, up until last year. That crime rate doubled, according to the FBI, in the last year. And again, look at Russia. Putin loves Russians, so he incentivized having more kids. You'd think Obama, if he was really pro-black, I mean, I'm pro-human, so I say black people, especially, stop killing your kids. Right. And, and get them in church, whatever. Take them away from Beyonce, who wants to eat their brain with the CIA, literally. And instead, it's like, oh, shut up. You know, this is our culture. No, it's an artificial culture. But, but I mean, look at it. Look at how you have Obama worldwide intensified, basically forced abortion funding in, in, in China, but also in Africa, where countries don't get money unless they pressure people to have abortions. Right. So Obama right. literally is the killer of black people, and they love him. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you're absolutely right. And uh, you would think that the media would take the time to expose this important stuff. They're not going to do that. They know it as well as you. Uh, you're not the only smart guy in the world, Alex. They know this, but they're not going to allow the, 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 the public to know this. And not only do black people don't know it. I mean, you, you, and, and, and I, you know, I hate using racial assassinations, calling a person black or white or color. I, I don't know if it gets us anywhere. We're all human beings. However, I do need to indicate that some of us have some behavior that is that is loathsome that we don't want to tolerate and others have behaviors perhaps that we can tolerate but on the other hand you would think that the world would have become a better place for the so-called black man under obama it has not it has gotten absolutely worse and and, and you would think that the rest of humanity including of the nations would say wait a minute something's wrong that I, that so many black people are killing one another so many are unemployed so many have gone to prison, and we can have people like Beyonce, who Jay-Z and Beyonce are supported by the money powers, if you will, uh, across, um, across America. And they can come out, you, I guess you're referencing Beyonce swinging the bat the way she was swinging. I mean, what is this? What, what, what is it? This is me. And by the way, Anybody who thinks that Beyonce is just going to be inspiring young black children, you better think again. You better think again. Beyonce is going to inspire children all across every spectrum to act in that violent way because the media has already publicized her or promoted her as Look, somebody. Since they special. weaponized MTV even worse the last three, four years, in all urban black areas, crime rates are exploding while crime was going down around the rest of the country. They are putting out, just like in the movie The Kingsman, where they're telling you what they're doing that came out last year. The billionaire has a computer program through the media to cause people to kill each other. Well, that's just a souped up version of what they've got and they're testing it in the black community. Then when the black community explodes, they're gonna scapegoat the black community even more and all of this sold like it's empowering the black community. This is so sophisticated. When I hear a profound statement on my broadcast, I generally say something like this, boom, shakalaka. So I, and I, and when I hear one that's ultra profound, I give it four boom shakalaka. Some only get one, some only get two. But I'm going to give that last statement you just made about the scapegoating, a uh, scapegoating and goading rather, and also the testing of all kinds of ills in the black community. I'm going to give that three and a half boom shakalakas. So boom shakalaka, boom shakalaka, <laughs> boom shakalaka and a half. So I, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> Keep going. I'm sorry. Keep going, Pastor Manning. <laughs> no, I know you're absolutely right. Um, and I, I, I would think that the other item of what you made mention of is that people are demon possessed. I mean, when you got 
when you, Alex, when you have an affection sexually for a five-year-old girl or boy, you're not human. That, that is not a human spirit. That is not something that is planted within you that belongs to the rest of the world, mainly because it's rare. Uh, but you have to understand then what kind of a spirit would cause you to, to be able to have such a desire. It's simply a demon. These are demons. These are persons with no constraints regarding what is moral, what is brotherly, what is accurate, and what is integral. They don't have those, if you will, bypasses or stop signs in their human makeup. They're demons. They don't have it. And so therefore, they're able to do that. The problem is, is that these same demons are now promoting that kind of, if you will, ideology in our schools and in our institutions, especially when you talk about homosexuality or sodomy, as I'm given to call it. So well, undoubtedly, they are pushing this 24-7. And when I go out to an abortion clinic to just peacefully do a report, literal devil-worshipping communists, that's how they proclaim themselves, show up and say, quote, I'm ugly, I stink, I love Satan, I killed my baby. And the men sit there and brag, I get women pregnant, and I've killed 30 babies this year, and I go and raise money to kill babies. I love killing them. Oh, I love it. And they actually are devil worshipers, and they're ugly, whether they're black, white, or Hispanic, or Asian. They're, they're shrunken. Uh, I'm not kidding. The black people have, like, this green tone. The white people have a green tone. They're, they're literal. They're turning into lizards or something. I mean, they are. We, we had an event three years ago at the Texas Capitol where a group of Christians began to pray for pro-life, and spontaneously all these women that were there started hissing and screaming, Hail Satan, who were in business suits and stuff, and like got possessed. How do you, what's going on here? This is getting weird. Well, I, I, you know, if you're talking about men at abortion clinics or centers uh, to boasting about their uh, abortion track record, you must be talking mainly about white people because black men don't go. They, they, make, they knock up women all the time. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but they never participate, they never hold a woman's hand when she goes to, at least if it does, it's very rare that they do. But having said that, I think that what our society has, has done is that things have gotten progressively worse. You know, Jesus said that this kingdom is not his kingdom, otherwise he would fight for it. And that what he is doing, he's going to prepare a place for us that will take us out of this. So in the midst of that, not that this kingdom has been turned over completely to Satan, and we have no one fighting. I'm certainly fighting every day. I'm in what I believe the capital of Satan's kingdom here in New York City, in Harlem, in liberal New York City, first of all, and in, in Harlem, New York, second of all, which is largely, if you will, African-American or black, and those spirits are still around. But what we have to notice as technology has advanced, as some degree, as life sciences have advanced, to some degree, as, 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 as a better lifestyle has, has advanced uh, across the planet, evil has also advanced. And that's the thing that people aren't keeping account on. I mean, Alex, churches are now, at least what you see past for churches, have dumbed down. They don't preach the strength of the gospel. I mean, you're a better pastor than the most popular pastor in America right day, right now, simply because you just speak the truth of the Bible, and you're not looking to hoodwink anybody. It, it a, we're in a terrible state of affairs, and Alex, it has the potential to get worse unless we can pull our powers together and try to bring truth and light, but we got some mighty giants that need to come down in order to be able to do that. The media is one of them. How do we get people out of their trance? Because the Bible talks about a great delusion, and, and most people really are. Even if they're half-informed, they're still plugged into TV and movies, and they just are kind of like, yeah, I know that's going on, but, you know, it's all just going to collapse. Don't they get when it collapses, they're in trouble? Don't they have any instinct to not have known evil that's after our families to even protect our kids? You know, it's an excellent question, and I'm not sure I've got the answer. I, I do know this. The observation is is that most people are complacent right now. And as I spoke earlier, uh, there are some people saying, well, we'll go out and we'll solve the problem for you. Uh, you just sit back and support us in whatever way you can. And I think one of the things that's got America uh, following Donald Trump so tenaciously is because Donald is actually speaking a truth 
to the powers, to the, to the circumstances that is, if you will, sucking the lifeblood out of all that of us. That was my next question. What do you make of the Trump phenomenon? You've been supporting him for over a year. Uh, you've met him, uh, met with him several times with other groups of pastors. Where do you think it's really going? And what do you make of the open stealing of the delegates that they've never done before? And they're just acting like it's normal. And Hillary's doing it, too, on the other side. I'm seeing unprecedented things happening right now. Well, you know, with respect to the delegates, it's uh, it's appalling. It, and that's a word perhaps I'd prefer not to use. It's outrageous. Uh, but what they're saying to us and what Donald is opening up, and we're able to see now that the popular vote or your vote does not count if a delegate wishes to negate your vote and put someone in who you did not vote for in any given state under the what so-called brokered convention situation, both the Democrat and the Republican convention. So uh, Americans ought to be up in arms over that. We need a new system. Donald is challenging it. He's bringing it to light. He's got them all running like a bunch of rats from a sinking ship uh, because the light is being brought to this. On the other hand, I think that Donald himself, I think that, you know, he, as I said earlier, he's doing a great job of bringing uh, to like what's happening, but he's also challenging the system in such a way. I, you know, I believe in him. I, 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 I think he's got a great shot at taking the presidency, but he's still a long way from accomplishing that because there's so many forces arrayed against him. And we just need to get more people excited about what he is doing and what he is saying and to recognize that there are powers that just want to stop him. Listen, I mean, the Koch brothers said uh, the other day, if I'm not misquoting them, that they would potentially rather see Hillary Clinton. That's right. I never played that clip yesterday. In fact, I can dig it out. I had that clip. I meant to play it yesterday on the Sunday show. He said, yeah, I know we're looking at supporting Hillary over him. Yeah. I, it's crazy. I always get accused of getting money from them. I never gotten a dime from them. And then and then now here they are going after Donald Trump. I mean, I'm sick of the left claiming anybody that's pro-gun gets money from the Koch brothers. Those guys are Democrats. We're going to be opening the phones up for your questions or comments for Pastor Manning here, Pastor James David Manning, atla.org, A-T-E-L-A-H dot O-R-G, a major beachhead of liberty and anti-New World Order uh, patriotism in Harlem for decades, uh, having a huge effect, a uh, frequent guest here on the show, atla.org. Opening the phones up, anybody wants to call, long-time caller, first-time caller, agree, disagree, have a question, have a comment, 800-259-9231. But I did ask you, give me your view on the globalist plan to collapse society now being out in the open, and how do we wake up the zombies? 800-259-9231. And what do we do about the CIA admitting they're funding the stuff we see on the NFL, like Beyonce saying, attack the police or attack your man? Or I mean, isn't it obvious this is to screw us over? And they make a movie like The Kingsman that's, by the way, excellent in that it's a group of billionaires that are going to basically put out a signal over the uh, TVs to make everybody kill each other. And that's a metaphor for what the culture they're pushing is doing. And my God, there ain't a lot of gun crime around the country unless you're in Chicago, New York, or D.C., where they've disarmed the people. And then it's the highest crime rate you can imagine. We're going back to Pastor Manning of Atla here in just a moment. I'm Alex Jones of Infowars.com. If you just joined us. I just started thinking about this a few weeks ago. I mean, we've been promoting high-quality, horrible food for a long time. It's insurance policy you can eat. I hope you never need it. But I was saying things are so serious. The globalists are gearing up for so much collapse. So many billionaires are moving to armored redoubts. They admit we're sitting on top of the biggest bubble ever. Police departments and governmental institutions are hoarding food and weapons. That this is insurance you can eat, so you can always get it back. Food prices are going up. You can get these really tasty, high-quality meals and eat them in two, three years. You know, when, when food prices have gone up, they already have. That's what the real inflation is. We only do this special a few times a year. InfoWars selects the highest quality, powered by Map Patriot Supply. I'm able to sell it for the lowest prices out there when it's regularly retail because we do a private label deal. And we have the widest selection, everything they offer. We have their whole catalog right next to ours. It's the same food, different label at InfoWarsStore.com. Super high quality and the little bit of profit we make helps fund the operation. Hopefully it's a large profit because we get so many people to buy it because it's such a good deal. That's my plan. And then I could fund my dozens of reporters and crew and all over the country and the world covering everything from Bilderberg we're going to this year in Germany to uh, the RNC, the DNC. We, I mean, you see our reporters in the field every week. You see our articles breaking through and, and changing the narrative on a daily basis. That's because 
You're funding this liberty movement with your dollars and getting high quality nutraceuticals, high quality horrible foods, Hillary for President shirts, uh, now Make America Free Again hats that look like the Trump, you know, hat your granddaddy wore. That's those are back in style. And so we've got those on the back of the Gadsden Snake. Don't tread on me, Infowars.com. Those are also available now at InfoWarsStore.com. And lastly, Super Mel Vitality will sell out in the next few days. We'll take advantage of that. Uh, all new DNA Force has been sold out for months. It's now back in stock. It's amazing. Ultra powerful Secret 12 Vitamin B12 is back. Big studies out last week on autism and schizophrenia and mental illness due to non-uptake of vitamin B12 in the gut due to gut flora problems, something we told you with doctors years ago. This goes under the tongue, folks. Higher absorption rate. Uh, and quite frankly, it's better than a cup of coffee when I got to work at, like, say, 10 o'clock at night. But then I can go to sleep anytime I want. Uh, so that and more, InfoWarsLife.com, InfoWarsStore.com. And don't forget to sign up for our free newsletter uh, where you don't just get exclusive videos and articles and things at InfoWars.com forward slash newsletter. We already put promo codes in there once a week for 10% off, 20% off, 30% off for folks that are InfoWars insiders. I've now said every day, we will have items discounted 30% every day. One item. Now, there'll always be stuff in there, other specials, 10% off this, 10% off that, because Anthroplex has been sold out for over a month. It's coming back in. I'm not going to discount it that big, but the newsletter, it'll be discounted 10%. When it's already here, but we're going to start that Wednesday. And that's just how we do this free market. We don't have big establishment sponsors. We're, we're doing something outside the box, and even mainstream media admits InfoWars is cutting edge. Beck has copied us. Everybody else is copying us. That's fine with me. I'm trying to fund a peaceful restoration of our republic against this globalist satanic revolution. Now, getting back to Manning, who I want to be able to get into uh, where he sees Trump going, where he sees the election, Obama lecturing England not to get out of the EU that makes most of their laws, uh, where he sees the awakening going, and then I want to go to some phone calls for Pastor Manning. But first, Pastor Manning, how do folks stay in contact with you? How do they listen to your show? How do they watch your show? And how do they support the great work you're doing up there toe-to-toe -to -toe with Al Sharpton? Well, the best way to do that is to go to our website at otlaw.org. That way we're accessible anywhere at any time. And all the information about what we do, how we do it, and how often we do it is available there at our website at otlaw.org. That's A-T-L-A-H dot org. But Alex, I hear, did I hear you say that you have T-shirts, Hillary for prison? Is that what I heard you say? Absolutely. We're saying that she needs to go to prison. And, and they're even uh, Senator Grassley says the FBI is going to leak the file if the Justice Department doesn't move to indict. Well, you, you know, uh, Donald Trump has said that, you know, she's being protected and that she should be exposed and crimin criminally punished, uh, or at least prosecuted, for what she has done. And I think that we're seeing where I see this campaign going. I, I, I can't imagine the Republican people being crazy enough to throw away the millions of new voters that, that Donald has brought, to, Mr. Trump has brought to the process and moreover, upset the, the Republican Party as it is. I think they got to let him have the nomination. I think they got to do it. And so if he does, it's going to do, it's going to be between Hillary and, and Donald Trump. But on the other hand, I think Mr. Donald Trump would probably love to have those T-shirts of Hillary for prison because he's not ashamed of saying that she, you know, both on Benghazi and also on the email scandal that she has lied, that there, there's criminal activity smoldering there that's being covered with a wet blanket by the Obama administration. So I, I, I didn't know you had T-shirts that said Hillary for prison. It's a very catchy, I mean, I almost thought you said Hillary for president. I said, Alex can't be promoting Hillary for president. But I realized <laughs> it's, it's Hillary for prison. And that's a very catchy uh, phrase. So I, I, I'd imagine he'd want to have access to those, or uh, some of his surrogates at the very least, uh, should they be uh, the general election be, be between the two of them. Well, think about what, what we're being asked to do. They're suspending elections, basically, to a certain... They're, they're trying to, like the Central Committee in China or, or Russia did, where, where the party appoints who can either run for president or who just who the president is. In the case of China, they just say, here, you're, you're the president. In Russia, the Central Committee and Politburo would decide who could run. Uh, and, but, but, but still, it's from a stable uh, of horses that are already owned, so you know that it's rigged. But, but now we have Hillary openly lying about Benghazi. It turned out her staff were ordered to destroy the emails and, and hide them. She's been caught absconding. She's been caught in obstruction of justice. She's caught red-handed, a thousand times worse than Petraeus had a few things in his file cabinet. 
And now the Democrats just say, we don't care. Imagine if she gets in, they're going to back her committing any crime. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And the powers that be are, the, the, the present administration has to be also very concerned about anything that Hillary would be uh, uh, guilty of, because in many ways they're just equally as guilty as she is. And in fact, the entire Benghazi event, Obama was at the head of it no matter what. And Hillary actually is covering up for him of what took place on that night and prior to what took place at Benghazi with whether or not they needed more security staff at the embassy there or at the, the, the headquarters where, uh, they were, where this event took place. O Obama understands that. Susan Rice understands that clearly. I, I think the Supreme Court justices all understand it, but nobody's going to do anything about it, including the media. They all know that Obama was involved in the process. And it goes back to Fast and Furious, uh, Alex, with the gun running uh, and the supplying of weapons uh, the, to the, if you will, so-called terrorists that Obama will not refer to as terrorists. And that's what that was all about. That was a shut, to, that was what, what took place out in Ohio this weekend with the shooting of those eight persons at that pot growing land area out there in Pikeville or whatever it was, uh, Ohio. It was a shutdown of the gun running operation there in Benghazi, and it, it, the, the, the officers there and the, 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 uh, the diplomat there had to be killed to stop that information from flowing to the American people. That's right, and, and, and that's come out, and then if no one gets in trouble, it's a whole new level, and to their credit, that's what the FBI now understands, their new director. I'm not lionizing them, but they've done some better moves. They, they're saying, look, we have to, you have to indict her, we've got to go public, or the whole system's discredited. Because she's committed these crimes just out in the open. Do you think she'll be indicted? No, absolutely not. No way. No, no possible way. And not just her, Alex. We have to look carefully at the delegate uh, distribution and choosing of the politicians or presidents, as you made mention of in Russia and in China. But we also have to understand that once you reach the level anywhere near a, the, the White House in terms of leadership, you can murder people with impunity. You can do just about anything you want to do with impunity. Uh, you look at the big banks here in, 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 in America. With all the criminal activity, with the money laundering that's going on, with the mortgage foreclosure, taking poor people's homes, jacking up rates, bundling mortgages and selling them and raising rates. And, yeah, and taking yet, houses they never even owned. Yeah, and no banker has ever been prosecuted, Alex. No banker has ever So it's just above the law hubris, but... Exactly. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. So, uh, you know, I, I, I was I'm just about complete, but you, you would have to think there's something there's something wrong with our system where that kind of illegality can go on. Look at HSBC Bank laundering literally billions of dollars in drug money and every other kind of money, offshore accounts that are being managed by big banks. And they are sucking the lifeblood with the interest procedures that they use on people, regularly poor people but co collapsing, foreclosing people's homes, putting them out in the streets, creating a, house, a homeless epidemic here in New York City, and yet not one case has gone to the court. I mean, people have got to be out of their minds to think this is equal justice in America, but that's how that's happening. And worse, you can kill people if you're in the presidential sure. entourage. I Such want to go to some phone president. calls, Pastor Manning, but I wanted to ask you briefly, joining us from the Otla World Center there in uh, Harlem, they're in New York, otla.org. James David Manning's our guest. I'm Alex Jones. If you just tuned into us on the radio, we're simulcasting on television at infowars.com forward slash show, where you can find the free podcast, Droid apps, uh, Apple apps, everything, infowars.com forward slash show. Please send that link out to everybody you know. You are the real power, viewers and listeners. Please never forget that. They're doing everything they can with all these different platforms, Facebook, Google, Twitter to try to restrict and, and siphon down how we can reach out. They want us on their platforms. They want to be able to control it and manipulate it uh, so that we don't go build our own systems. Now, we know that. We still know how to get around them because of you. But for most people, they don't know they're on these platforms being controlled. We know it. Uh, but we're going into enemy territory to send emergency transmissions, like a pirate radio station in the Cold War. And we fully understand that they're going to try to jam us is the point. But getting back to this past, I want to go to calls. I remember you coming on about a year before Obama got elected, and you were basically implying that he could be the Antichrist. Now, I know the Bible says there are many Antichrists. There's an Antichrist spirit building towards the final Antichrist. 
And when you study history, then you realize that, that it is like a spirit. It's a system. These people are like the same. They just get more advanced. The technology gets more advanced. But then I saw him go to Cairo, his first speech, and speak perfect Arabic. And they were all blown away. They said he was better than people in, 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 in that country. Uh, I mean, even the accent was Egyptian. It tell everybody was blown away. He's been anti christian He won't let Christian refugees out. Makes jokes about it. Attacks Christians on Easter. Has flies always landing on him. Is involved in every evil you can imagine, persecuting black people, especially like he ha like he wants to destroy them uh, all over the world, making sure they get killed and aborted. And, You're not that right. So so so, uh, I mean, more and more, he really d is a demonic creature. His wife is demonic. Uh, they don't act or look like any black people I've ever known, or any people for that matter. They just are weird. And, and like we got to eat what she says, and schools are fine if we don't do what she says, and it's just really weird. Who, is, who are these people? Who is Obama? Well, you know, I've gone ahead and advanced Obama is the son of Satan. He's not just an evil person. He is indeed the, the if you will, the emissary for Satan himself. He's the son of Satan. Uh, and Because no one, Alex, has brought the amount, a level of evil to this planet. I mean, I know Mousy Tongue killed 60 million. I know that Lenin killed a whole lot of people as well. And that was it, it, it indeed rank evil. But they didn't bring necessarily the kind of spiritual evil that Obama has brought. And we will not see the lasting effect of the evil of Mao or Hitler. I want to say this, though. He, he did herald. And then Kissinger, after you said that, said he's going to bring in the New World Order. He's the one. And when he goes to the U.N., all the leaders, they're like worship him. And it's how they act towards him that's weird. It's well, Alex, imagine this. Imagine this, where the New World Order comes into being led by Obama where he's able to bring in evil, he's able to flip the script, the biblical script, he's able to flip the family script, he's able to take the family script that was a husband and a wife with children, he's able to flip that now and make it two men or two women, he's able to flip the biblical script about how we are to treat one another, what's right, what's justice, what's law, what's lies, what's true. He's able to completely flip that script. And we're now living in a world where the opposite of what we lived in for quite so long is now the norm. That's exactly where we're going at present. All you have to do is read the tea leaves. All you have to do is see where we've come from, and especially on his leadership. Well, I'll say this, they the launched script. their next wave operation with Obama. Everything launched with him. So whether he's, the, he's definitely, uh, definitely a precursor. I do now see what you're talking about. Um, he is like a demonic entity. I agree with you. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the Catholic Church, that, that has, look at this that, Pope is uncloaked all of a sudden, and, and it's like a demon. Yeah, so we we have to be aware of the fact that the order to in order for it, I, you know, I've taught that Satan has nowhere to go. He has nothing to offer people except this kingdom. He doesn't have a heaven to offer people. So Satan's main tool that he offers people is not a, you know, a mansion in the sky or a, a, in a, an eternal life. He offers people power. He offers people talent. Uh, for instance, somebody like a like Prince who recently committed suicide or whatever it is he does. Satan offers things within this kingdom. And Alex, if we focus on that, then we can see clearly what Almighty God offers people. Stay is there, the it's offer. amazing. And by the way, Prince talked to Mankell before he died and said he was a listener and it was actually didn't like all the Satanism and stuff. I'll, I'll get your take on that straight ahead. Stay with us. Whether you believe in God or not, you look at what the world government is building, you look how they're going after cash, the family, it's everything that's in the Bible. And we're going to be taking your phone calls for 15 minutes to the next hour. The Pastor Manning's going to leave us. Terry, David, Marshall, Floki, Paula, and others, the toll-free number to join us is 800-259-9231. Now, most talk shows plug every segment, and I know why. That's where the real advertising is, not just during the ads. It's how talk radio tries to stay alive. I used to plug once an hour. I've been plugging a little bit more because we got some shortfalls with all reporters out in the field and the DNC, the RNC, Bilderberg coming up. We've got to cover it. It's very expensive. Even staying in the cheaper places because you know they can gouge you for stuff like that. Uh, so, no, when you buy the products, you're supporting the tip of the spear. Infowarsstore.com, 10% off when you sign up for auto ship. Cancel anytime. Free shipping, free shipping on orders, $50 or more. We've got a huge sale going on storable food, the highest quality, 30 40% off right now. Pastor Manning's our guest. I want to start one of calls in a moment, then 15 minutes to the next hour, and he's got to go. 
But Pastor Manning, finishing up on the spiritual nature of this, I've been to Bohemian Grove. I've covered Skull and Bones. I've experienced it. You know, quite frankly, when I was seven, eight years old, I was kind of rolling my eyes in church a little bit. But by the time I was 13, 14, and found out the, the rich people in the neighborhood were devil worshipers, and the billionaires over the hill were devil worshipers, and the hot chick that picked me up when she was 17 and I was 13, she wanted me to be a devil worshiper, and devil worship, devil worshipers, people had private helicopter pads, you know, and 20-bedroom houses. These people are Luciferians. They think the devil's God. It's real. So, so whether the devil was real or not, they're manifesting it, and, and I'm not saying that's what I believe is going on, but to the atheist and people, I don't think they understand this is a satanic conspiracy. Oh, uh, yeah, so you got picked up by a hot chick, is that right? We tried to convert you. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Anyway, no, but listen, uh, here, Alex, the, 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 here's what's happening, and it's, it's quite simplistic. Uh, however, it is very serious. Uh, Satan's plan is to, just, is to do just the opposite, uh, starting at the genesis of this whole business of God and Satan, Almighty God's about truth, always has been, always will be. He's about creator, he's, he is the creator. Satan's one source of power was to do something that God never did, and that was to lie. So we start there, and you recognize that Satan's plan is just the opposite of what God does, and it is extended into where we are at present. Now, now of course, when death came in and all the problems that happened with Adam and Eve, this kingdom has been run pretty much by the power of Satan with what God's plan is, again, quite simplistic, but ultra and uber serious. God's plan is to rescue us from this kingdom that Satan has us in. Satan's kingdom is just the opposite of what Almighty God has done. God's about truth, Satan's about lies. So what we see now is a manifestation of Satan being able to overcome the power of the word of God, the principles of God, creation itself, by creating his own world, if you will. And the best way to describe that is the new world order, which erases out the biblical family, traditional, if you will, godly world order with a new world order where people are very comfortable with just the opposite. And, and, and it's not just there. God they're coming out with done. all the fish that won't reproduce, plants that don't reproduce. All the, they're, they're remaking the whole world as artificial, so they rule it as God. It's exactly what the Bible said. Exactly. That's exactly. So, so when you look at it from that point of view, it's easy to understand uh, to, uh, what's going on, but also very easy to deal with in terms of how to confront it. But in no why should any why anyone think that there's not mighty power. And one of the things that's associated with this is wealth and political power. For instance, like Skull and Bone. Or it, it, like, for instance, the Bush families and others. Admitted, that, admitted devil worship. We'll be right back in 70 seconds with your phone calls. Pastor Manning's our guest. Infowars.com. Spread the word about the broadcast. You have the power, the folks. GCN Let's Live override the globalists. As we speed towards the 2016 presidential election, the process for nomination becomes less and less transparent. The media has created the perception that the voters will decide the nomination, and that's the concept, that's the conflict here. <laughs> what you're telling me is it's not a democratic society and your votes don't right. necessarily matter because it's a democratic representation, correct? No, that's not what I'm trying to tell you. What I'm trying to say is that there's a, we're just one of the political parties. There's many political parties, but political parties choose their nominee, not the general public. And I'm really am asking you, it's more than a process question. It's an integrity of the election question, and everybody's asking me this question. So I want, I'm giving you an opportunity to explain it. Uh, Sean, the, the only people asking this question are the hardcore Donald Trump supporters. Why, why, do, you, uh, but, Senator, why do you do this every single time? I No, you got to stop. Every time I have you on the air. Join InfoWars this Tuesday, April 26th, starting at 7 p.m. as we cover the primaries in the Northeast. All right, we got two more segments from Pastor Manning, and I am news blitzing and taking calls for the balance of the hour. Then Paul Watson, fresh horse, bust out of the gate from London, England. It's all coming up. Pastor Manning is our guest, taking your phone calls right now at 800 259 9031. Paula, Marshall, David, Terry, and others. Who's been holding the longest here? And that would be, I guess, Terry in Minnesota. You're on the air. Go ahead, sir. Yes, uh, uh, Alex, how are you doing today? I'm doing okay. Your phone's way overdriven. Can you kind of back off it a little bit for me, bro? How was that? 
Uh, it's still pretty bad. A lot of folks get on speakerphones and things, but go ahead and ask your question, sir. I wanted to ask Pastor Manning. Uh, uh, Pastor Manning, you sound like you've been studying with the Shepherd's Chapel of Dr. Arnold Murray. Are you sure uh, you guys have a lot in common? I don't know that I have been studying with them. I know I have not been doing so deliberately, perhaps some of the information. I'm not sure exactly what their thesis is and exactly what they represent in totality. Uh, but I, if they're preaching the truth, then yeah, we're on the same page. Well, look, I mean, it's like I can have an expert on the New World Order on when something's just broken. And we're saying the exact same thing, and it turns out to be accurate because it's not like we're mainstream media trying to confuse people. We've done our research. We know who we're dealing with. The whole mainstream media job is to keep people out of understanding. Once you get it and how this system really works, you understand it. And, and people say, well, I don't want to know how it works. Folks, the amount of money you could make, if people are greedy out there, knowing how the New World Order operates is incredible. But people are so bought into, I mean, just in gold and silver trading, the success I personally had, and knowing how things work, it's just incredible. Because this knowledge is there and the average person doesn't know it because the system doesn't want you to have it. Uh, let's go ahead and take another call. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Marshall in Delaware. Marshall, you're on the air with Pastor Manning. Go ahead. How are you doing, gentlemen? Uh, thank you. Um, how are you doing, fine, gentlemen? Um, fine. Um, I just want to just try to figure out why Hillary Clinton just seems to have this spell, especially amongst the minority voter base. For P and Alex, you want to know how to get people to realize how it works. Here's how it works. She did that interview a few last week where she says hot sauce is what she always carries with her. She's doing that with two former hosts of MTV shows. So they know what questions are going to be asked. They know how she's going to answer. And then they just sit there and giggle and pander along. That's how it really works. That's yeah, she's having scripted TV programs. Absolutely. I mean, Obama's press conferences are pre-scripted now. Uh, Pastor Manning? Yeah, well, you know, that's pretty much par for the course. Uh, that way they keep control over all of the, the flow of the information. You know, I don't congratulate them for doing that, but I certainly understand why they do it. Uh, what would be preferable, preferred is that they would not be controlled, that the people would be able to ask whatever questions they like, and the answers would not be pre-prepared. I mean, it's all it's like eating a, a pre-cooked dinner. You just put it in the microwave and, oven and eat it rather than having a fresh, fresh prepared meal for you that's prepared by some loving hands. That, that's how I see that. Pastor Manning, we've got a question for you from David about vaccines. David, you're on the air. Hello, Alex. Pastor Manning, I love you both. Thanks for your humble work. Um, I was just wondering, uh, I see a lot of people talking about immunizations and how they're bad, and, and then the other side talks about how they're a myth. Well, what does someone like me do who's been directly affected by this with my son who got a chickenpox vaccination and had it for three months and a fever of 103.6 for four out of seven days of the week, and the hospital kept denying that's even what it was and basically refused to treat him because they didn't know what to do. Now he's got autism. He's on disability, and all these special classes, he, I have to protect him. God, uh, most day. hospitals don't want to admit they did it, so they won't even tell you he's having an autoimmune response and the techniques to lower an autoimmune response. They won't even tell you give him, give him, uh, you know, uh, antihistamines or whatever. They won't even tell you give him Benadryl. They'll just let him have a brain inflammation for, you know, a month and basically be brain damaged. Stay there. I want to come back and get Pastor Manning's view on all this. I'm not against the science of vaccines. It's just they have a danger. Uh, and the system's hiding stuff in it. Taking a few final calls for Pastor Manning, but if you look at the self-driving cars, the computer takeover, the elite saying they're making the world obsolete for humans, China announcing in Japan they're going to have almost all their farmers be robots, humans aren't needed. Why would the elites build a world where humans aren't needed? Well, they've told us at the UN. The public numbers are 80% population reduction, more of the internal are 90% forced world population reduction. I'm not saying vaccines are bad enough themselves, but I, I don't bring this up as Pastor Manning's African-American. I bring it up because that's the target population as the test. 46 years, 47 years, tens of thousands of black men and women coming into medical clinics, really a government eugenics project all over the South, not just Tuskegee, and being injected with live syphilis to then spread it. Thousands died. That's just one of, the, of thousands of declassified programs where they're training to take on rural communities and Christians and black communities and it's certain communities. It's not our government itself that's even bad. It's this evil force within it.
directing all this. And, and I want to take a few calls and let you go. I know you've got your own work to do, Pastor Manning, there at your Atlas Center. But you cannot deny there is an anti-human agenda going on. So I say to the New Agers, hey, the Bible says it's a fallen angel here to destroy us, and God's in the heavens trying to protect us, whatever. I, I don't know what it is, but what the Bible says is real, and it's the most accurate thing out there of all the ancient texts. But a lot of the other ancient texts point in the same direction as well. And I think we would be ignorant to ignore what's happening. In just in 60 seconds, I'm going to go back to the call. She's got to go. The vaccine issue. The vaccine uh, issue. Yeah, especially when it relates to black or African-American people. I went to the doctor a month or so ago, and he asked me if I had chicken pox when I was a young person. I told him, no, I didn't think I did, but I did. And the reason why he asked is because chicken pox at my age can then evolve in what's now known as a a medical illness dynamic called shingles, a very burning of the inwardly of the skin. And so there's a vaccine that's given, even though you don't have shingles, uh, that will prevent it from ever erupting in your body. And I won't take it. I, I'm not going to take it. And a couple of things. I, 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 have my, I have my ultra concern about vaccines and the depopulation structure that is happening uh, with the New World Order. But I also have a concern about myself personally. I mean, my doctor, I know, but he didn't do the administration. This is done by a local drugstore. And I can let some idiot, I'm not going to let some idiot at a drugstore pop me what he says is the vaccine and give me something that could sterilize me or give me syphilis or my something dad, fall. Great oh, answer. My dad just retired last year. He still has his medical license. He, he was a prolific dentist, worked about three, four days a week for 10 hours, then was a manager the other days. But he saw thousands of patients, and his patients would come in, and they'd say, yeah, I just got the flu two days after I took the flu shot. Or he saw hundreds of them that would take the shingle shot and then get it a week later, including yeah. my grandmother's best friend. Wow. I'm not going to say her last name. She, she listens to me. I'm allowed to tell the story. She was an RN forever, super healthy, and almost killed her. She took the shingle shot and got the shingles for the first time in her life. Pastor, go ahead. No, so I, you know, I don't take vaccines. I just don't do it. I mean, yeah, I'm a bit cautious about saying to anyone about their child and their welfare that you should not. However, I would put put my position out very strongly and ask people to be very careful about the medical profession because they are definitely sure. not to be trusted. And we do understand that there is a global depopulation plan and not just abortion. And, 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 and black people are a major target. And I mean, they've caught, exactly, and they've caught the UN all over the world adding a sterilant to tetanus shots they give women that then sterilize them. That's been confirmed mainstream news. Yeah. So, I, I, you know, I, I just want to say that about the vaccine issue. Well, I agree with you. And if we could just get people to Google UN caught adding sterilant to vaccines, they'd get major Indian papers, major African papers, even Catholic papers. They've caught them. And the UN said it was an accident, but it was done over and over again. No, it's... The Google Ch rich Chinese get clean vaccines. German government gets clean vaccines. British government gets clean vaccines. They all get their own special vaccines. They still have some side effects, but they don't get the ones we're getting, folks. Just like last week, they admitted again, we're still given the SV40 polio vaccine that has the monkey virus that gives you cancer. Oops, gee, I was told that five years ago by our pediatrician. He said, listen, you don't say my name on air because I'm getting ready to retire. But he goes, I volunteer for city clinics. We were in East Austin giving kids 1970s version live polio to the mouth, and I wouldn't do it. I looked it up. It was the gr groups that had the cancer virus. I mean, yeah. talk about evil, Pastor Manning. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. But I think it's, it, it, it's critical that we look at what's happening medically. The best thing to do is try to eat the best kind of food you can get. Uh, watch your own health uh, very carefully, and, and you have to have a doctor that can be a trusted one. Uh, and and by the, the way, thing, guess where the city clinic was? J j just guess where they were out giving the kids free vaccines? In the ghetto. In the ghetto. That's yeah, where it was, they were. It was black that's, people. That's, it was black that's people. where they put them. Yeah. No, it's, it, it, but anyways, he pulled me over, and then he was—he's a big guy. He—he's one of the. He was the big one of the biggest pediatricians in Austin. He would also not make you get vaccines. He wasn't an anti-vax guy, but he quote wouldn't. A lot of them refuse service if you won't do it. And I, my kids have been going there years. And he grabbed me on the arm and he said, "I watch your show." And he goes, Listen, "You don't tell me. You told me, I said this, but not my name." You promise. And, and, you know, Alex, I said, you yeah, I'll tell you. Alex, <laughs> you, you made mention of the Kingsman in the, in the first hour with respect to the television response telling everybody to kill themselves. The, the implant that was put in people in the Kingsman, I saw that move. I thought it was a good production as well. But, you know, a vaccine could be a sleeper chemical placed in your body 
that can that could have no particular medical effect upon you. It's but, binary. Yeah, but yeah, but when a particular signal is activated through some sort of electronic, if you will, a telepathic system. That's biometric. Uh, they and, admit, and, and, sir, and they you're absolutely you're right. It's a binary weapon. You know, yeah, you're doing something that that could be detrimental to you and your family. Uh, kill your mother and eat her flesh uh, because of the control of this this sleeper cell, if you will, type of vaccine. All right, okay, but that's what I, I want to make. I, I thought about that when you mentioned that earlier with the king. And in closing, and then I'm going to let you go and go to the calls. I know you're busy, sir. They come out and admit we're putting brain chips in the troops' heads that have PTSD. We're going to make you see again if you're blind. It all sounds great, but it's like childhood's end. It's all enslaving us our iqs are dropping we're more unhealthy they're putting us in crutches they're cutting our legs off to give us crutches we're being dehumanized we're being put in an artificial system exactly again what the bible says closing comment pastor manning uh we I, we, are, we are in a desperate need for prayer and we need to find a way to defund the new world order because that's where the power is the power is in that timothy verse of the love of money is the root of all evil evil and also in what we expressed earlier about flipping the script uh and the one thing that satan has to offer he does not have eternal life he's never offered anybody that he's never offered them a mansion in the kingdom of god but he does offer in this world and those that uh, you, you could let's say a moses of, of of that would be in the kingdom of god or an abraham or peter or david in the kingdom of god we would look at people like Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, the Koch brothers, and others as the, the, the antithesis or the exact opposite of the Moses and David in this kingdom because they've got the money, they've got the power, they've got the influence, and that's what Satan's offer. That is his reward. And so once we understand that dynamic, I think we have I to agree with you. But for the first time in history, the power elite can offer life extension and they and their top secret, which they now is starting to roll out. Well, yeah, well, yeah, you're right. You're, is, you're, the, you're is, right. is that now they're claiming yeah. they're going to give yeah. you eternal life, merging with a machine? But that's another con. Yeah. Well, I, I think that most people will be a little weary, a little leery of that. Uh, yeah, and so it's not going. It may not sell that well. But listen, Alex, thank you so very much for having me on uh, your broadcast here today. There's one other way people can contact me, Alex. If I can say this before I depart, sure. Is they can they can follow me at Dr. James David Manning. Uh, they can, they, James D. Manning, I'm sorry. They can follow me at Dr. James D. Manning, and usually I'm tweeting most of the time about things that are happening. That's at Didn't Twitter, James David Manning and Otla.org. Thank James, you. It's James D. Manning, Alex, James D. Manning. That's right. All right, well, thank you so much, James D. Manning, uh, there on Twitter. We've got it up on screen for the Manning Report and Otla.org. God bless you. Talk to you next month. God bless you. Take care, Alex. Thank you so very much, sir. You bet. Love getting him on once a month. Uh, I want to continue with your calls. I know mostly we're for him, but we can continue on if you'd like. I've got news coming up as well. David, to finish up with the caller uh, in California who we were talking to, um, you're saying, what do you do? They, they produced a secret vaccine fund in the 1980s, started off, I think, $3 billion. I know it's had tens of billions pumped into it since then. You can look it up yourself, see the latest numbers. And then they make you go through all these Byzantine forms and years in court and then to protect the manufacturers of the vaccines, they might pay you off, you know, let's say your, your kid's completely paralyzed. You know, they might say, we'll put a million dollars in a fund to take care of them for their rest of their life, you know, as a vegetable. Uh, but that's the intense hard kill. They don't mean to cook everybody that much. It's just some males, because we're more susceptible to it, it hits us harder. You're supposed to have an IQ reduction. And they don't want to tell you, you know, and I'm not going to be a medical doctor here, but there are gut flushes you can do depending on what you've been hit with in the vaccine. A lot of times it programs the gut to create toxins that cause brain damage. Uh, but with something generally uh, like the type of uh, a viral situation you were talking about, uh, what happens is you have an autoimmune response in the brain and other organs. And so they won't tell you what's going on. They won't tell you it's an autoimmune response. If they can, they'll claim you shook them if they're little enough. And that, so they can put you in prison because there'll be blood on the brain. But if they're not going to frame you for that, they won't do a brain scan or an x-ray. Only they decide at a really evil hospital to frame you to get extra money in the system and to hurt humanity worse. You're in a true satanic hospital. And they are out there. Uh, they'll just try to keep you back and not tell you. More moral doctors will admit, okay, it's the vaccine and tell you, here's what you do to uh, reduce inflammation. Ginger shakes, uh, you know, huge dosages of ginger. Uh, you can do artificial things. Uh, same stuff you do if a bee bit you uh, or a bee stung you.
uh, and you're having an autoimmune response and you're having an allergic response, they're not going to tell you your son's having a month-long response with his brain swollen. They're not going to say take, uh, you know, different uh, things that are, are known to reduce that. They're just going to tell you nothing's happening. It's no big deal. The government loves you. And so I'm going to come back to you, David, and get your take on what happened to your son uh, straight ahead. They're not going to tell you to take Benadryl. They're just going to say this is new. This is normal. We ought to get that clip where uh, Bob Dylan says he sold his soul to the devil. And the lady on the TV interview is like, excuse me? And he goes, yeah, that's what you have to do. And, and, and then he became a Christian later and then wasn't a Christian. It's pretty wild. And I happen to know that Bob Dylan, from multiple sources, is fully aware of the New World Order and what's going on. Very strange bird. A great songwriter. You know, the voice is a little annoying. Uh, some of his songs are great, though. What's that one where it's the long ballad? I don't know. He's got so many great songs. Actually, I actually, I actually, Hurricane? Really, I actually really like uh, Bob Dylan, but I'm digressing. Uh, David in California, uh, listen, you're saying, what are you supposed to do? They just deny it, look at you like you're stupid. The vaccine insert of the particular vaccine your child took is on record that it could cause neurological disorders. They just con game you and say, no one's ever been hurt by this. Move along. Now, if you have a convulsion in the hospital or in the clinic itself, then sometimes they admit it. But, yeah, a fraction of the people damaged ever get the money. So you're asking, what are you supposed to do? You would need to uh, basically go through a vaccine damage law firm that would take you on a contingency and then get your records and start fighting back against this. Uh, describe what happened to your son, how old he was. Well, he was just before he was two because I kind of thought I was legally mandated to get his vaccinations before he was two. So I went in there a lot. and the late and the lady explained every shot to me. But then she pulled out another shot, hit him with it. And I said, wait a minute, what was that one? And she said, oh, that's chicken pox. And I was like, well, well, I was kind of going to just have him get that naturally like I did. Right. And she's like, oh, no, we do this now. It's a new thing. And I was like, right, well, let me just I stop you. You say, you know, there's your 18 month old or almost two year old son. This is when most people in and have the bye bye time. Because it's the third round of shots since birth, and the body just gives up. That's when they give you a whole bunch of them. So what was it, five different vaccines? Or were some of them triple shots where it had three different things per shot? They want to go up to ten things per shot. I mean, that'll just be, you know, dead when you get them home. And they'll say, well, it's normal to have a dead body. I mean, I'm sorry to talk like this, but I'm warning the audience. Uh, how many shots did your son get? Well, he got, like you said, right around five, and she told me that some of them had multiple things in them. And, but when she, like I said, she explained every one of them until she got to that one, and then she just quickly did it, and then I said, wait, what was that? Okay, but then when I got him home, within, I'd say, 48 hours, he was completely covered in sores and had 103.6 degree sure, temperature. I took him to the hospital. I took him to the hospital. They had some nurse that didn't speak English wrote down 100.3, so they ignored him for hours. And I said, what are you doing? He's got 103.6 degree temperature. Come, and they said, oh, no, he doesn't. He only has 100.3. I said, well, I saw your nurse write it down wrong. Yeah, and I listen, I'm sorry, but they, I'm sorry to talk to you like this, but you deserve the truth. Other people, they had him in the oven. And uh, those were probably some pretty evil people. Uh, the, the good nurses we've had on, master nurses, RNs, heads of old wings, and they, they have the preemies in the big hospitals, and they know that it's going to kill them when they give them the shots. Before, they never gave them shots to preemies, but they do now. The eugenicist bioethics boards want it to be outrageous and see what we'll put up with. That's why they mandate two flu shots for pregnant women. They even admit, oh, it's not, quote, needed. Well, one's not needed, but just say two. Knowing it has a chance to cause an autoimmune response. Look, if your wife or girlfriend is pregnant, don't give them a vitamin B12 shot. Don't introduce anything under their skin that can cause an autoimmune response. It will reject the fetus, the baby. And but now they have you know news ads. Pregnant women get extra. It's like saying you know go to get a firing squad, jump in a wood chipper. They've got to over the top it. You see to hide it in plain view. Like saying father and mother's evil. Don't say boy or girl. Say purple penguin. Everything's got to be completely flipped in La La Land. And I'm so sorry this happened to your son. So so so, how was he at almost two? I guess was he 20 months, 21 months versus after after the shot? What happened? Well, well, see, after this, this, um, all this fever for three months or whatever, there was definitely delayed learning. He didn't talk till he was like four or five, mm -hmm. and then when he did talk, it was just like no, dad, dad, like a three-year-old or a two-year-old. Mm -hmm. Actually, before that even, and so he's been in special needs ever since, and this is he's nine now, and I still am dealing with the denial from the schools, the hospitals. The well, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. You want to? I'm so sorry. God bless you. I know it. 
Look, they came up with the 223 to wound people to get around the Geneva Convention because they found that would cause more of the Viet Cong to have problems taking care of a wounded person. This is meant to wound families and wound males, the leadership. You know, Pharaoh would kill the firstborn to control people. They just stun the firstborn. I'm sorry they did this to you, sir. And, and understand, you sound like, are, 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 are you white, Hispanic, black? Asian, and uh, I, What are you, sir? What, 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 what's your racial background? I'm Caucasian. Okay, well, listen, <laughs> listen, listen. Imagine how bad it is for you and your male son. The numbers are over double for black males. And that's why you go out on the street. There are so many white, black, you name it, who look like they're not home. It's because they're not. Okay? They're gone. They were given chemical lobotomies, and, I, and, and your son may bounce back, but here's the deal. Do your own research. Start a website about, so people Google what to do after vaccine if the fever won't go away. They could have told you it was an autoimmune response, but they didn't want to admit guilt. So I, I love you. I love your child. I have empathy. I'm so sorry, sir. It makes me very angry. Now you've only got to warn other people before it hurts them. Okay, We're that's, on the your, march. that's your mission. The empire. That's your mission. Run. If you choose to accept it, Alex Jones and the take GCN the mission. Radio Network. Join us in the victory against these Satanists. We have an elite that want to play God. I'm going to take four or five phone calls right now from Brian, William, Sean, Kip, Paula, and others. Paula's up first. And then I'm going to shut it down for calls and try to just at least run through a bunch of these important headlines. By the way, that was a great learning experience for me today to realize that for about a week and a half or longer, I've had a Hillary cough because mold levels are so high in much of Texas and, and where I live in Austin because it's been raining almost every day for like a month. I mean, it's, it's in the news, the, the flooding, the dead all over the state. I mean, it's bad. Dry creek banks are like 10 feet deep. And it's mold, you know, cedar or mountain juniper will give me a headache or whatever. But mold makes me have scratchy lungs and scratchy throat. And there I was last night up off and on all night coughing. And I would wake up and go, what can I do? And drink some water. And then I wasn't even thinking that somewhere in the kitchen or the house, I guarantee you, my kids love it. I had a bottle of lung cleanse. We call it lung cleanse. I mean, it's got all these key essential oils in it. I mean, you name it, just everything. And it's so thick. It's so good compared to competitors. It'll be like two or three different things or maybe something to numb your throat and alcohol. And it's like clear water. And yeah, you, I mean, I can get a bottle of that stuff for like 30 cents, 40 cents. The spray nozzle on the top costs more than the bottle. But to put the essential oils in there, concentrated, is expensive. I think this is like $10 a bottle. That's the actual cost. We go and look it up. We tried to get it done less, but it's all organic and the rest of it. And we sell it for 25 or whatever it is. We got to make a profit to fund the operation. But the point is, I said, wait a minute. I could, I could barely do the show. I was coughing. I said, get me lung cleanse. And I did it. What you do is you spray it three or four shots to the mouth, and then breathe in after you've already sprayed it. <gasps> and it just absolutely knocked it out 100%. And this is something we get such rave reviews on that I never even really talk about. It's such a great product. I'm going to do an ad or a promo about lung cleanse. And again, it's got, what, 4.5 stars. It's got 233 reviews by third-party power reviews. But look at the other sites that are reviewing it as well. It really is an amazing product. Only produced by Dr. Group for InfoWarsLife.com. We also have a deal running 30 to 40% off. We only run twice a year on all InfoWars Select storable foods. That's just My Patriot Supply, private label by us. The very same products are labeled uh, My Patriot right next to our products, InfoWarsStore.com. So it's, again, a really good time to take advantage of that with all the turmoil, with the globalists wanting us to be dependent on them, with, with government stockpiling food and weapons. I hope we don't have to use this. I'm not saying we're going to have a total martial law collapse, but it's gone from a possibility to a serious, serious possibility, maybe even a probability. In, in fact, you can see them gearing up. I, I want to say it is a serious probability, and I don't like to say that. 
And there's obviously people that jump on the bandwagon and fearmonger about stuff that isn't accurate or say it's going to happen next week. And you hear that everywhere. All I'm saying is this is storable food the last 25 years. It's insurance policy you can eat. And folks need to take advantage of it at InfoWarsStore.com today or InfoWarsLife.com for the nutraceuticals like Brain Force or X2 or Super Mel Vitality that's about to sell out, by the way. We have the new Make America Free, uh, not Make America Great Again, Make America Free Again with InfoWars.com on the back. Those are very popular, made in America. Uh, but right now, let's uh, go to your phone calls. Thank you for holding. Paula in Florida, thank you for calling today. Hi, Alex. Um, I'm calling uh, about two things. One thing I want to give my opinion, I do believe that Obama is the Antichrist. He has been sleeping with the Muslim Brotherhood since he's come into office and to kicked all the media out of the Oval Office when he first came into office. He is everything Antichrist, just like the Muslim religion that was formed by Catholicism back in the 4th century. By, um, there's a book from a Jesuit priest, Antonio Rivera, that put out about how the Muslim religion was actually created through Catholicism to attack Jewish people that were following God and it wasn't following the way they wanted it. Well, them. let me ask you, you this question. Discovery. Why do you, was it History or Discovery Channel had that hit show a few years ago? I only saw it a few times. It was History Channel, where the devil looks just like Obama. Why would they come out with a devil that looked almost like Obama? What, what are they well, trying, that, that's establishment. That, that's what the system wants. What are they trying to tell us? <laughs> actually, Hematep, Hematep, the Egyptian god, actually looks almost exactly like Obama. Obama, Obama is, is if you know, to support everything anti-God, anti-Christ. That's what the Muslim religion was formed through Catholicism was to establish another religion. Well, ma'am, 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 ma I got to stop you. I appreciate your call. And you can send me the proof if you have it. I have never seen any proof that Catholicism was in bed with the Muslim religion. The Muslims, within 200 years of launching, almost took Rome and almost took the Vatican. They, they did take Rome and went all the way into Poland and to the edge of Germany today. What's Germany? Uh, I have never, I mean, Catholicism and the Orthodox Church as well barely beat back Christendom, barely beat back the Muslim invasions. Paula, I mean, what's your proof of that? Where does that come from? Okay, I was watching Israeli Ben Noon. Um, it's uh, it's Israeli News Live by uh, uh, Benjamin Ben Noon, and he gave a report about Anton Rivera. It was about a month or so ago, and he was a Jesuit priest that wrote a book back in the 4th century that uh, talks about how the um, Catholicism actually published the Quran. They actually published that book. They actually published. They didn't have publishing then. Okay, okay. Uh, they, they didn't. They didn't have publishing till uh, till till the f middle of the 14th century. You're saying fourth century. The Gutenberg Press, and then it wasn't widely distributed for about 200 years. Movable type, but the modern Pope is backing radical Islam and saying bring him into the West and, and as a globalist, a part of that plan. Absolutely. Um. But you got a lot of folks that say, if you slip on a banana peel, Jews did it. You got other folks that say, if you slip on a banana peel, Catholics did it. There's globalists manipulating any and every organ. The Protestant church is one of the most out of control, foaming at the mouth, New World Order groups there are. It's not that Protestants are bad. I mean, I come from a long Protestant background. And then I have all these weird anti-Catholic people that are mentally ill claiming, you know, because there was a black guy named Alex Jones that was that's a Catholic they're nuts, folks. They think that's me. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, I'm going to tell you something. The white supremacists are freaking nuts. And so are the anti-Catholic people. Now, it doesn't mean that Israel doesn't have serious issues, and I criticize when Israel does bad stuff, or that the Catholicism isn't out of control in the New World Order tool at the top. It's just that I've never seen such dishonest, foaming-at-the-mouth loons. I mean, loons. I don't know who's more out of control. The white supremacists... Or the, the Catholic bashers, because they will just make stuff up, Photoshop your head on things, and they really believe it. And it's like a power trip, like they say you work for the Vatican, or they say you work for the Jews, or, or, or here's one that pseudo-intellectuals do. I've had people I know in the media walk up to me that I've helped and been nice to. And they'll, be, they'll go, I know you work for the Koch brothers, filth. And I go, well, huh. They'll go, oh, yeah. I don't sit there and go, no, I don't. I go, okay, well, fine, you know. I mean, the Koch brothers finance media that comes after us, just like 
Media Matters does with the, with the Obamas and, and, and the Clintons. And they literally are working with talk radio to try to kick me off stations. I know they're connected to it. There's a reign of terror on patriot conservative libertarians like myself that are real patriots. They're shutting us down everywhere. I mean, look, kicked off XM, top subscribers. People love me on there. Kicked off all, and we're getting more stations, though, as we lose stations. But know this, they're trying to contain us. Contain me? I'm just a regular guy. But, I mean, when they're basing the new X-Files on it, and Chris Carter says that on national TV, and when, you know, there's all these huge movies coming out and then they admit that and I'm, and I'm licensing clips of my show to all these huge movies in production and, and 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 our videos are getting six seven eight nine ten million views a week and we're getting on all these stations across the world not just here and our numbers are just exploding our reach on every platform is exploding but they really are doing everything they can and i'm not bragging when i say "Ooh, we're big i mean we're still relatively small for the message we put out we should be reaching everybody i mean everybody should be reaching out to everybody they know and saying you should be tuning into this because we told you that all the new appliances 16, 17 years ago would have tracker chips in them and communicate with your smart meters and run your whole house and tax you by the hour and control your thermostat and control what's in your garbage. And it's all here now. I've got it in the news today. We told you about the NSA spying. We told you about cancer viruses and the vaccines and hundreds of other issues that have been proven right. They were proven right then. When I had the family pediatrician, he's retired now, one of the biggest pediatric facilities in Austin, one of the big ones that, quote, wouldn't try to make you take vaccines. You know, when I had my son born, I went and Googled uh, pediatricians that aren't, you know, forced vaccination because they'll, they'll refuse care and then try to bully you into it. And, and there came a few names, and this guy was one of the most respected as well and one of the top guys. And he said, listen, I'm going to tell you something, but I don't want you to tell anybody. I told you, you can tell people a story, but don't tell people I told you. And he tells me, and then he's a big, pretty big guy. He grabbed me hard by the arm. You know, doctors be authoritative. And my kids have been going there for years then. I mean, like five, six years. Then by then I had like three kids. He grabbed me by the arm. The guy had like eight or nine doctors under him. But he would come in and see me. And he said, I told you that, but don't say my name. And I said, okay, but, you know, he was kind of mad. I could tell he was freaked out by it. He wanted to tell the truth, but he didn't want to be involved in a scandal. So he knows vaccines are bad. So he has a clinic where they don't make you take them. Close quote. And then his conscience tells me, and then he gets scared that I'm not going to, you know. Whistleblowers do that all the time. I mean, what is that doctor supposed to do when he's in an East Austin clinic with black and Hispanic kids, you know, 90% of them, and he starts reading on the batch insert, and it's live virus from cultures in the 60s and 70s banned banned by 1978 and he started warning people he talked to me about it about a minute or two he, he raised an alarm and they said well we're doing it this is what the health department ordered the austin health department gives black kids cancer viruses it's sensational meanwhile i can't even go to nice restaurants hardly anymore in east austin it happened to me three times about a year ago. They got some of the best restaurants over there. And I had big, racist black guys come up and demand money from me. And I don't look like a pushover. And I had to say no and have them scream at me. And that's because this all started with all this race push stuff. That Again, they're murdering these people with soft kills, and then they watch the TV like everybody else does and believe I'm the enemy because I'm white. Let me tell you something. It came out last week. All over the world, they're having to recall the vaccine. They went, oh, we found out it was the live one with the SV40 cancer virus. They're still mixing it, creating it, and using it, even though they've had hundreds of sources for the polio vaccine that they could produce. The original one they produced in the 50s has been kept alive because it's the one they want to give you, and it's been connected to millions a year in paralyzed children, and they just call it a vaccine bad reaction. And they supposedly outlawed it in the West, but it's okay in the third world. And they give Eastern Europeans, you name it, Asians, Africans, and Latin Americans 
SV40 cancer virus that is the leading cause of viral-based cancer in the world. And then they have the New York Times come out a few months ago and say, science is shocked by the fact that looks like most cancers viral. <laughs> Scientists are shocked that George Washington had a little ponytail or that he wore Hessian boots or that he couldn't chop down a cherry tree. It's like scientists shocked that a virus causes the flu. Scientists shocked that humans need oxygen. I'm going to go back to your calls. Paul, I appreciate your call. I just, here, here's the deal. I don't care who's running this show. I see the communist Chinese doing the most evil stuff in the world. They're Chinese. Whatever. Our elites are working with them. They're doing it to their own people. It isn't the Chinese are evil or Jews are evil or these, it's that they're evil people in control of groups. And nobody around me wants to warn anybody about SV40 and the kids' vaccines, the oral vaccine. It's like, oh, that's Alex, you know, he's just, yeah, he's, he's right about stuff. But, you know, there's a new episode of this coming out on Netflix tonight. Do you think they're going to stop with giving kids in East Austin live cancer virus that, that goes in and embeds? See, the reason I like SV40, for whatever reason, it, it, it spreads very slowly over decades. And for whatever reason, when hormones are higher in the body, it never really takes hold. But as soon as your hormones start dropping, you die of the cancer. And it can cause hundreds of different variants and different tissues. It's just it embeds the whole body, replicates slowly. The government estimates that 98 million people in the first round of it in the 50s got cancer. That's just, just type that in, you'll get CDC documents from the 70s when they stopped using. 98 million people. And I got all these callers. I want to take your calls. I got tons of news here. But, I mean, how do I just not tell you that this is happening? And see, humans have been set up in a predatory way where... Oh, that's just the poor people, or that's the minorities. But see, they tell you the racism is how you look or where you go or what you do or how much money you make. No, 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 no. The subtle racism is a eugenics classism where, yeah, I've heard HIV targets people with dominant genes and with certain receptor sites. Yeah, I've heard that there might be some cancer viruses, but you just know, you, you can pull up the numbers in Europe here in the U.S., you know the more highly educated you are, the less vaccines you take. You just type that in, you'll get articles about the most educated county in America in, in, in Northern California has the highest vaccine rate, only 22%. Health authorities are panicking. Gee, why are the highest educated group not taking it? Because they're all people that were health department folks and doctors and scientists. They all know. Every time I've been invited to a party at some mansion or something out in the country, I'll figure out why I've been invited to it and I'll walk in. It's only happened four or five times. And there'll all be these doctors and scientists sitting around and they'll all turn like a movie and they'll go, we're aware of the plan. We were part of it. We're, you know, we're preparing for whenever they do release the plague out here in the countryside. And, you know, by the way, John Wayne, you know, just lives next door. You know, it's like Twilight Zone. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And then, you know, then the Wayne family is like, we're evacuating to Costa Rica. You've got only five, six years to get out. That was six years ago. And I'm just sitting there, you know, and it's like, do, 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 do. I, I don't know, folks. I'm just saying, you trust this government and this media, you're crazy. Paula, thanks for the call. We're going to let her go now. Kip, Sean, William, Bryant, your calls are straight ahead. Kip and then Bryant in Hawaii, stay with us. I love it. Feels no, good. Nice Getting attacked by, let's not exaggerate, 20 newspapers a day, sometimes 1,000. The day's been light. It's only been about 20. Last week when Billy Corgan was on, it was in hundreds of publications. Uh, look, oh, look, this is from Esquire, a conspiracy theory about Beyonce and the CIA. And it says an update on old white men still freaking out about Beyonce. And in my video, I show the congressional record legalizing the CIA. I show the hundreds of millions being spent at the NFL for propaganda. And I show MTV's connections to Sumner Redstone and the CIA. And then I show the Washington Post foreign policy. U.S. repeals propaganda ban, spreads government-made news to Americans. Her anti-cop stuff is the official White House program with Soros. And then they make a big joke out of it. When Esquire did a cover story on me two years ago, the, the, the top one of the top writers in the country that they sent here to do the uh, piece, we can pull it up. 
and I, I think it was Father Knows Best for the Apocalypse was the name of the article. They've since changed the name online, but that'll bring it up. That was a story in the magazine. His dad had been the CIA section chief in Southeast Asia, the famous one, who was assassinated Viet Dinh and all this stuff. And I'm not going to get into him, but it's, it's like they literally send, basically, like the CIA here to interview me. Atlantic Monthly, like, sent a Mossad guy over here. And then they sit there and they make jokes about it. Now, that was a pretty fair piece. They weren't even going to publish it. And he said, well, if you don't act crazy, you're not going to put something in there. I said, oh, whatever, I'll do it since I'm wasting the time on this. That was John Richardson. Look, he wrote a best-selling book about his dad in the CIA. <laughs> I guess that doesn't exist either, right? Oh, oh my gosh. I, I, I have had all these agencies too try to recruit me over the years. Yeah, it's just crazy. I just can't believe how these people operate. But they're operating domestically. They think you're dumb. Uh, let's go. Kip's up first, and then we're going to go to uh, Bryant. Kip in Georgia, you're on the air worldwide. Hey, brother, how you doing, man? It's a pleasure to finally talk to you. Um, well, pleasure to talk to you. Thanks for holding. Up, it's been a jam, sh jam up show today. Uh, one thing I just I really enjoy when the pastor comes on, but uh, I know it's a lot of crazy stuff going on right now. But I, you know, I just kind of feel it my duty as a Christian to go ahead and voice why. I mean, I'm not speaking for the rest of the country, but I have to say this, man, uh, the Lord is moving in Georgia. Uh, I know there, it's, it's not all over the place right now, but the seeds for revival have been planted. No, sir. No, uh, no, no, no. I, I, no, people are getting closer to God, and a lot of worldly people I talk to now get it, and they know it's not going to be in some church or some Bible-thumping Pharisee, you know, who's arrogant and probably in men's bathrooms at night, you know, doing weird stuff. But but the, they're get, the Spirit of God is moving. You're right. And, you know, it's going to revolve around music, believe it or not. And, you know, the thing with God is all things are possible through him. And, you know, I, I think God would like to use nobody else other than the same ones who sold out to Satan and spin them around. Because they're getting, they're, with all these musicians dying, they're starting to realize that, hey, they're not invincible. And I believe, and I see the Lord. I, I have connections within the music industry, and I see the Lord moving. And Kip, I agree with you. There's no atheist in foxholes. Everybody feels the world is changing. We'll be back in 70 seconds. Infowars.com forward slash show. Sign up for the free newsletter and get up to 30% off promo codes exclusively. Man, that's good stuff. Speaking of beach music, surf music. Let's talk to Bryant in Hawaii. Surf's up, my friend, huh? My name is Brant, by the way. My brother is Brian. So well, Brant, Brant, well, 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 they spelled it wrong, but let's just call you the yeah, man from right. Hawaii. Hey. Yes, I am a surfer, and let me tell you, I know about Obama, and I know about Hawaii, and I know about the whole deal. Now, listen, if nobody recognized Jesus when he was around, how do you think people are going to recognize the devil? First of all, he signed in with the Quran. You know what I'm saying? He had the Quran on top of the Bible. I and forgot about elected, that. I forgot about that. Listen, listen, Alex. When he, uh, oh my, well, I just got confused for a second. Um, oh, give me a second. It's okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm understanding. It's not just that. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, so he signed in with the Quran, but beside besides that, in March 22nd, he rode a white donkey. Do you remember what he did? He stood in the ascension spot in Israel. I forgot about that. Jesus yeah, it's left. totally in your face. It, it, he is the devil. The thing is, people don't recognize it because he's a regular man. See, Jesus came as a regular man. It has to be. Well, let me say this then. If he's really the Antichrist, all hell's about to break loose. It is, Alex. That's why I love you because you, you, I, I take your products. And let me tell you, you're right. And so was Manning. See, he had to digress and say that he was the son. Because, see, you're saying he's not, but I really know he is. And that's why I was able well, to. Well, I mean, the Bible the says today. there's many antichrists, and, and who knows, Obama could leave office and become right, the head. But, but, Obama could leave office and become the head of the UN later if he is the antichrist. I know this people that have been around him and stuff say he's really evil. And I don't know, I, I don't think he's some ESPN watching trendy, but he's not. He laughs and goes, it's not fair. We, we have to bring everybody in from Syria. Well, then he blocks Christians for every like 300, 400, 500 radical jihadist types, he'll bring in one Christian. I mean, he just literally hates Christians. He absolutely hates them. 
that explain the Antichrist, and he qualifies 14 out of 16. Well, you know, I guess the other two is, I guess he's got to have a wound in his head and then have a miraculous recovery, right? And that's when he then really launches. And then what's the other one? In his head. We always saw that scar on his head in a couple of pictures. Yeah, but it's a public wound, well, well, a grievous wound. I know, but what, what God is hold saying Hold on a minute, is, hold on a minute. Everybody said Gorbachev was the Antichrist. He's got a birthmark. That's not what the Bible says. It's a grievous wound, a lethal wound in the head that he miraculously recovers from. And that the whole world can see the talking beast that's in all the open areas that everyone sees him worldwide in this talking marvel that is the beast, which is a giant jumbotron or holographic TVs. I, I don't think we're there yet, but we're getting close with the mark of the beast and the cashless society and the whole nine yards. Uh, I think that uh, Hillary's giblet, a uh, turkey giblet, is the Antichrist, that thing that hangs down beneath her neck. Uh, I think that uh, I think that the giblet of, uh, what's that guy's name, the Prince of Darkness, Richard Pearl. I think Richard Pearl's turkey gullet, where he keeps the cream gravy, is the Antichrist. And I'm not trying to poop at what you're saying. I'm trying to have some fun. This is pretty scary stuff, brother. You know what? We're going to find out soon. I love you. Uh, caller from Hawaii. Sorry the name got wrong or I read it wrong. William and Sean and others. I don't know if Paul's going to go to you. He can find out. Paul Watson coming up. All fresh pony in the shoot. Ready to come galloping out. This donkey uh, has completed his transmission. I'm going to follow some reports for the nightly news. Coming up in T-minus 6 hours, 55 minutes. At InfoWarsNews.com, PrisonPlanet.tv, and select TV stations around the country. We are back. It's the fourth hour of drive of the Alex Jones Show. I'm your host, Paul Joseph Watson. And I'm from England, a country where our own national flag is called racist and banned. But waving an ISIS flag next to Parliament is perfectly fine. Yes, that actually happened, if you remember the story. And I'm from Britain, a country where we let in 300,000 immigrants net every single year yet still revel in our own collective white guilt and ban our own flags to avoid offending immigrants. Can you imagine a situation in the United States where on the 4th of July, the local governments, the city governments, ban the US flag, ban the display of old glory because it might offend Mexican immigrants, because it might offend Muslims? Well, St. George's Day, is nowhere on the scale of the 4th of July, but it is England's national day of supposedly celebrating its heritage. But that is no longer permissible in the new multicultural society that we're now living under in today's day and age. We got this story out of the Express, which Alex touched upon earlier. Anger, as council officials say, UK city is too multicultural to celebrate St. George's Day too multicultural to celebrate our own country, to display our own flag. An English city council refused to host St. George's Day celebrations because the area is too multicultural. And you know, Bristol is not even, compared to many areas of London, that, quote, multicultural. So if it's happening in Bristol, it's happening everywhere else. Bristol City Council allowed the National Day to pass without a single event for the patron saint, despite its history, dating back to 1222. Council chiefs said 91 different languages are spoken in the town, and it would be very difficult to commemorate them all. Some in the area feel as though the English symbols have been hijacked by far-right groups and are concerned about being branded racist. There's that collective white guilt once again. We're racist, even though we let in 300,000 immigrants into a country with a population of 60 million every single year. That means we're racist, even though we're the most tolerant country in Europe for this. Got to get that white guilt going. According to the Daily Star Sunday, Kafner Wolf, founder of 91 Bays, Ways to Build a Global City, which aims to unite Bristol's multicultural communities, said people can be frightened of the white and red St. George's flag. So, <laughs> because it triggers people, because it frightens them, because it violates their safe space, it's banned. This is the national flag of England. This is the national day of commemoration of England's history going back to 1222. And it's banned because it might offend minorities, because it might offend immigrants, because it might offend Muslims. What's not banned is if 
You're walking around the, the Houses of Parliament, Westminster, the very heart of government and the capital city of the country, waving an ISIS flag. That's perfectly acceptable. This is from back in July, and we covered it at the time. Police criticised for not arresting man carrying ISIS flag near Parliament. Police have been criticised for failing to arrest a man who was seen wandering near Big Ben, draped in an Islamic State flag. The man was photographed walking past a group of scouts outside the Houses of Parliament as he wore a large ISIS flag on his back. He was carrying a small child on his shoulders who was waving a smaller flag in their hand. And you can go to the Guardian article and see the picture. Giant Islamic State flag draped over most of his body, walking around central London, walking past the Houses of Parliament, walking past Big Ben, draped in an ISIS flag. That's perfectly acceptable. Doesn't matter if that causes offence to anyone. The very symbol of a group that has decimated, that has massacred Christians across the Middle East, that has beheaded people, that has put people into tanks and drowned them alive, that has burned people alive in cages. You can support them. You can wave their flag. That's perfectly, perfectly acceptable. Doesn't matter who takes offence. But God forbid, would you want to wave the flag of England, the St. George's Cross, on St. George's Day? This is the state of political correctness in Great Britain. If you think you've got it bad in America, <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. And of course, it's not the first time we've seen this. In fact, I put an article out three years ago, May 2013. Council vetoes display of English flag because it's, quote, offensive to Muslims. A local council in England vetoed the display of St. George's cross flag over concerns it would be offensive to Muslims while allowing the rainbow flag of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender pride movement to be flown. And of course, the dichotomy is, what are they going to do, given how intolerant Muslims are towards gay people, towards transgender people? What are they going to do when they demand that those flags be taken down? Because they cause offence. Because, of course, as we saw from a poll a couple of weeks ago, 52% of Muslims think that homosexuality should be illegal in the United Kingdom. Should we take offence to that? Or are we going to accept this? Are we going to accept them when they call for the rainbow flag of the gay pride movement to be removed? Leftists are going to have a certain dichotomy when it comes to that situation. But to be fair, in the past, when this has happened, they've talked to more mainstream Muslim groups and asked them, what do you think about this? Are you offended by the display of the, the English flag, the St. George's Cross? And as is quoted in this article, in fact, a spokesman for the Bristol Muslim Cultural Society, where this flag, display of this flag, the commem commemoration of St. George's Day was just basically banned, not recognised by the council, he said, quote, use by the far right is one thing, but to say that Muslims are offended, I don't think is correct. We understand the flag is part of this country's heritage, and in fact, many Muslims will identify as being British themselves. So even the Muslims themselves, when they ask them, they're not even offended by it. So who are they trying to protect here? These are the same councils that, for example, in Rotherham, in Oxford, in Rochdale, in all these different areas of the United Kingdom, covered up, in some cases for over a decade, child grooming, child sex abuse trafficking scandals, again, being run, being overseen by groups of Muslim men, predominantly Pakistanis. In Rotherham, the council covered it up for 13 years while these children, who were mainly white girls, were being abused. When asked why, they said, well, political correctness. We don't want to cause offence by drawing attention to the fact that this is a huge problem amongst Muslim communities, amongst Pakistani Muslim gangs, where they kidnap children, they sell them into the sex trade, they abuse them. A number of these scandals across the United Kingdom, which have come out over the past five years, and they covered it up to not cause offence, just like now they're telling people they can't display the St. George's flag not to cause offence. And in fact, 
if you look at this article from 2013, there are more examples. During the World Cup, okay, so this is soccer. This is not even affiliated with any kind of national celebration. God forbid we would want to express any pride in our own country, right? That's not allowed anymore under this new culturally diverse society. But even during the World Cup in Bolton, in Coventry, people were flying the St. George's flag to support the England soccer team. They were told by councils to take it down because it could be deemed racist. This is the flag of England. This is not, you know, a swastika. This is not a KKK flag. This is the flag of the country in which we live. In 2009, Labour-run Sandwell Council withdrew funding for a St. George's Day parade, citing fears that it might attract far-right elements. So this hasn't just happened now. This hasn't started in 2016. We've been documenting this for at least seven, eight years. This is the state of multiculturalism in Britain today. And on that note, moving on to our next article, and this is going to be posted up on Infowars.com here over the next 10, 15 minutes. Former U.S. diplomat, suicidal migration policies will cause Europeans to flee their countries. Listen to these amazing quotes. This is former U.S. diplomat Adam Topolansky, who worked for the U.S. State Department between 1984 and 1988. He warns that Europeans will flee their own countries as a result of suicidal migration policies that have seen millions of Muslim asylum seekers pour into the continent over the last year. In an article for Hungary Today, and the article links through to that original editorial, Topolansky says that European countries like Hungary and Czech Republic that have refused to bow to the migrant influx, and of course have been labelled racist and xenophobic for merely wanting to protect the integrity of their own borders, will become a refuge for European citizens who will become migrants in their own land as a result of mass Muslim immigration. Listen to this quote. Tens, possibly hundreds of thousands of German, Dutch, French, Belgian and other Western European citizens may opt to move to Hungary in the next 10, 20 to 30 years and settle there in the wake of the migration crisis. He adds that, quote, reverse migration is a predictable trend because European citizens, quote, will want to escape their leaders' suicidal migration policies and will seek a safer place to retire. This is a former top U.S. diplomat, worked for the U.S. State Department, basically saying that European citizens are going to become migrants on their own continent. Western Europe is going to be overtaken by this mass wave of Muslims and that Central Eastern European countries, like the Czech Republic, like Hungary, are going to become a new refuge for Europeans fleeing from the West. We'll get into it more after the break. This is the Alex Jones Show Live. Stay tuned. Back. Fourth hour overdrive of the Alex Jones Show. Please support us by getting the products at InfoWarsStore.com. Again, vital for you to fuel the tank. We're going to be sending more reporters to Bilderberg this year. And that doesn't come cheap when you're sending people not only all over the US, but all over the globe to cover these developments. So please show your support as you have done and continue to do so at InfoWarsStore.com. So basically in Europe, we've got local government councils saying that it's offensive and racist to commemorate our own country's history, but walking around the centre of London, right outside the Houses of Parliament, waving an ISIS flag is perfectly acceptable. This is the attitude that leads to the dissolution of Western society, the collapse of Western civilization, and that's exactly what this former top U.S. diplomat, Adam Topolansky, is warning about in his editorial, suicidal migration policies will cause Europeans to flee their countries. So he's basically predicting that by 2050, Muslim migrants, and this is just a statistical fact, if you drill down into the numbers that are being imported every single year, if that continues, then these Muslim ghettos, which created the Paris massacre, which created the Brussels metro and airport bombing, 
will not only continue to develop, but they will continue to spread to more areas of major cities. And he's basically saying that the few countries, the likes of Hungary, Croatia, Czech Republic, that have refused to bow down, that have actually defended the integrity of their own borders, of their own national identity, those will become the safe havens for Europeans to go and live, simply to be safe, simply to avoid mass societal disorder and civil unrest, which we know separately the elite are preparing for. Quote, whatever the future will bring, one thing is predictable. The preferred place for all Europeans by the middle of the century may wind up to be East Central Europe. That's what this top former US diplomat is saying about the migrant crisis, that it's destabilized the continent, that it's, quote, altered the way of life, the religious and cultural fabric. And that's exactly the point. I mean, Angela Merkel herself admitted back in 2010, along with David Cameron, that multiculturalism has failed. And you can see that with your own eyes if you go into any of these so-called diverse areas in major European cities. Go into Molenbeek, not very diverse. Go into certain areas of Paris, again, not very diverse. Go into areas of East London, go into Whitechapel, go into Tower Hamlets. In fact, if you go on my Twitter, you can see a video walkthrough of Whitechapel in East London. See how diverse that is. None of this is diverse. The very same white middle-class liberals who preach all day about open borders, they don't live in these migrant areas. There's no diversity because they don't want to live there because it's not a nice place to live. It's a crap hole, I'm sorry. Because these people have no loyalty to the country and you've, we've asked them in polls and they've said that. That's why these middle-class liberals don't want to live there. They talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. Diversity doesn't work, it hasn't worked. It's created ghettos, which have become centers of radicalization for ISIS terrorists as ISIS said in their own manifesto, was their plan. To hijack the migrant crisis, to create more radicalized ghettos in major European cities, to use as bases to launch new attacks. That's exactly what we saw in Paris, that's what we saw in Brussels, Belgium, and that's what we're gonna see over the next 10 years throughout Europe. And every time there's another major attack, the left is going to go on Twitter and start a hashtag, you know, pray for Berlin, pray for Dresden, pray for Munich, wherever else it happens next. They're going to go on the street, they're going to hug a Muslim, and it's going to do absolutely nothing. It's only going to embolden our enemies, and it's only going to obfuscate and hide the fact that many of these extremists, many of these jihadists have support from Islamists who are living in our communities. That's how Salah Abdeslam was able to escape capture the Paris massacre culprit for three months living in Molenbeek amongst his friends and family who protected him. And when the police showed up to try to arrest him, they were pelted with stones and rocks by the rest of the people in Molenbeek. That's your diversity. That's your multiculturalism. It's failed. We'll be right back. We are back. It's the fourth hour of the Alex Jones Show. And that article I was talking about before the break. Former US diplomat, suicidal migration policies will cause Europeans to flee their countries has just been posted as of a minute ago on Infowars.com. So get that out. Again, amazing quotes that have echoed numerous other prominent voices throughout Europe. We're talking heads of police departments. We're talking heads of militaries. We're talking security experts in France and Germany. Switzerland, Norway, all of these countries who are saying that the pace of this, the breakneck speed of importing these millions of migrants is going to lead to civil unrest, to social disorder. It's going to lead to mass resentment, as is already happening in Germany, which is why they have to cover up the fact that all these crimes, all these rapes are being committed by these migrants. That's why they had to cover up the Cologne mass molestation on New Year's Eve for days because they, quote, don't want to legitimize critics of mass migration. They care more about the narrative than they do about the safety of women 
or the very existence of Western civilization. These people, these political leaders have completely sold us out. And even in Sweden now, they're getting uppity about it. Sweden, the country where some of the politicians there want to give returning ISIS jihadists jobs and welfare. That is the liberal basket case that Sweden has become, where the government demands that people hand over their garages to house refugees, or you're a racist. But now Zero Hedge reports, Swedes revolt over refugees near schools, demand effing answers from Stockholm City Council. This is a quote, and you can watch the video. You can't just sit there when we come here looking for answers and say you can't answer that. That is not okay. There has to be some effing order in a democracy, but you are not answering our questions. We all want effing answers. We will stop shouting when you answer our questions. So it was basically a council meeting during which they were debating the council's plans to relocate hundreds of Muslim migrants right next to a school, and the Swedish people in Stockholm aren't very happy about it. Gee, I wonder why. Could it be because of the uh, colossal amount of young girls and children being raped near schools? Which is why a school in Bavaria, as we reported last year, sent a letter home to parents telling them not to let their daughters wear short skirts because they housed migrants in a nearby gymnasium. In fact, the gymnasium was attached to the school. They just turned it over to migrants because they've basically got no space left in Germany. They're kicking out Germans out of social housing to house migrants. And they said, look, these people are from a different culture. Some of them like to rape young girls. So it's not like, well, what should we do about that? That's a horrible culture. Why are we importing that? What the hell's going on? No, it's you have to adopt to their bad culture, not we have to reject their culture in the first place. That's what's happening in Europe. And now even Swedes are up in arms about it. Zero Hedge also reported this weekend, Swedish Muslim politician quits after refusing to shake women's hands. Of course, we've seen that before. We saw it in England, a video a couple of weeks ago, one of the local councillors who supposedly, you know, represents the resident living in the town, refuses to shake a woman's hand. Again, because he's from a terrible culture that is intolerant and that treats women little better than farmyard animals when you get down to it. Kit Daniels just put up an article on Infowars.com. Activists expose illegal Sharia law court. Muslim migrants create their own state within a state. The shocking video shows activists exposing a Sharia law court operating inside London and outside British law. The court, publicly known as the Islamic Sharia Council, is one of an estimated 100 Sharia law courts carrying out legal matters in the UK in accordance with Islamic law. And again, these are the courts that run parallel to British law, i.e. in direct violation of it, but that's okay, because we don't want to offend the precious Muslims, of course. And in these courts, you know, women are disenfranchised. Men can get divorced by just saying, I divorce you, and that's it. For women, it's virtually impossible, even if they're in an abusive relationship, which often they are, because they're treated as second-class citizens. And then you look at polls, support for Sharia law. Again, huge numbers of Muslims living in the UK support it. A majority of Muslims living in the Middle East support it. And you know, eventually it doesn't just stop at disenfranchising women in divorce courts. It extends to more glorious examples of good culture, like chopping people's hands off for stealing and stoning gay people to death. That's Sharia law as it operates in some countries in the Middle East. And now it's slowly creeping into Britain. Breitbart reports, and I've got a ton of this news, I'm just going to keep going with it because it's just effusive every single week, pouring out of every orifice, this takeover of Europe. In Sweden, migrant wife beaten for wanting to learn Swedish. So this is someone who's trying to assimilate. We can't have that. Let's beat the crap out of them. An asylum seeker living in Sweden beat and kicked his wife in the head because she was reading to learn Swedish, police have confirmed. The 37-year-old Afghan migrant launched the attack on his 32-year-old wife yesterday in an attack that was witnessed by other migrants at their asylum 
center. And again, a lot of these migrant attacks aren't even taking place, you know, in the streets. They're taking place in these migrant centers to the point where police in many towns and villages in Germany have just said, we're not going to go there anymore because they're being so overstretched. They're being called out to riots, to mass brawls in these migrant centers between people coming from different countries, because, of course, most of them aren't Syrian. A lot of them are North African. They're being called out for migrants, you know, beating and killing their wives. We had a case a couple of weeks ago where a migrant just killed his wife. So this is what ha what's happening in these migrant centers. So it's not just out on the streets. But don't worry, because the Pope is coming to the rescue once again. Report, this is out of Truth Revolt. Pope ditched two refugees once he found out they were Christians. One of the most appalling aspects of the current refugee crisis is that persecuted Christians across the Middle East have been completely ignored in favor of Muslim migrants. And you can see the truth of that in the numbers. And in fact, CNS News does a new report on it every single week where they say, you know, number of Muslim migrants admitted to Europe over the past month. And it's something like, you know, thousands and thousands of Muslims and like three Christians. And of course, the number of Muslims is going to be greater, but not to that degree, unless there's a deliberate policy or there's more of an urge on behalf of Muslims to get to Europe. So even when the world's most prominent Christian figurehead does nothing to help, but instead worships at the altar of multiculturalism and its new world order, what hope is there for Middle East Christians fleeing genocide? A disturbing report claims that when Pope Francis found out that two of the 12 Muslim refugees he recently planned to take back to the Vatican turned out to be Christians, he, quote, dropped them like a hot potato. This is the Pope we're talking about. Rula and Malek Abo, a Christian brother and sister duo who hail from Syria, say they have been let down by the Pope after he left them behind at Lesbos refugee camp. They were promised a new life in Italy. The two were two of the lucky chosen 12 refugees selected by the Vatican to be taken from the desperate camp and housed in Rome, but what seemed like the chance of a lifetime was cruelly snatched away when they were told the following day they couldn't go. Instead, three Muslim families were taken because <laughs> we don't have enough Muslims pouring in. Thousands and thousands compared to a handful of Christians. The Pope rejected the Christians and again chose the Muslims. This is the same Pope who has completely betrayed Catholics by adopting this ridiculous one world order global religion, this global warming climate change crap, which he constantly pushes. This is a Pope who has betrayed Christians and in a very real world example that happened once again. Daily Mail reports Afghan couple who have nine children and receive 5,000 a month in benefits have asked for free IVF treatment after arriving in Austria, again debunking the argument that we need all these migrants for cheap labor and that they're such a boon to the economy and they don't drain our resources at all, even though in countries like Sweden, the majority of welfare payments go to migrants, despite the fact that they only make up about 7% of the population, 58% of welfare payments in Sweden go to migrants because most of them of working age are not working. Again, debunking that argument that we need them for cheap labor. That's disproven by the Czech Republic, a country that has had a stable population for 100 years, that has had very limited immigration, and yet which is the most thriving economy in Europe, high standard of living, affordable housing for the population, great place to visit for a holiday, you know, high quality of life because they've had a stable migration level. They've took in skilled immigrants, which is always a good idea. They've kept out the hordes of people who are just going to suck off the welfare system, and their economy has prospered. So again, debunking this argument that we need them all for cheap labor. Over in France, they're feeling the full effect of this cultural enrichment once again. Video shows migrant women beat 16-year-old girl for wearing a dress. Video out of France shows a group of migrant women beat a 16-year-old girl they labelled as a slut for wearing a dress. As the victim reportedly did not know the assailants, the attack appears to have been a random act of violence. 
Fortunately, a man was able to pull away the most vicious assault. And if you look at this woman, she's literally like six foot four, a giant hunk of a woman, a land whale, if you will. And she's basically beating the crap out of this poor girl because she's wearing a dress in France, in Western Europe. Again, another example of cultural enrichment. Need I go on? Mail Online reports U.S. Embassy worker who ran Bangladesh's only LGBT magazine is hacked to death by Islamist militants along with another person after receiving threats online. So LGBT advocates in countries like Bangladesh are being hacked to death for publishing magazines, yet what is the British Foreign Office concerned about? Well, they're concerned about North Carolina's bathroom law and the fact that, you know, a tiny proportion of the population which ident identifies as transgender, 0.03%, might be offended by having to use the bathroom of their biological birth. Well, God forbid. Meanwhile, LGBT advocate hacked to death in Bangladesh. Nobody's talking about it. Nobody cares. Transgender bathrooms more important, of course. Switching gears now, we're going to go to this Mark Dice video. He basically went out to the beach in San Diego and asked Americans what they thought about the fact that the word gullible had been removed from the dictionary. Here's the clip. Words that enter the public lexicon like selfie and twerking and they're added to the dictionary. The Webster's Dictionary Company has been removing words to make room for new words. It removes amongst other things the word gullible from the 2016 dictionary edition to make words for like twerking okay do you think that was the right decision to do no do not do you think maybe they should have just added a few extra pages instead of removing words like gullible from the yeah dictionary I agree. but i got it run but thanks All right, thank you this year, the dictionary has decided to remove some older words that aren't being used as much. One of those words is gullible. Not enough room in the dictionary, apparently, with all the new words coming into use. Do you think that's the right decision, or should they just have maybe, like, added some extra pages to the new dictionary editions? It's, yeah, I believe it's always best to add to the dictionary, you know, because, you know, everybody's is, you know, trying to learn more and, you know, add to life. So, yes, I believe you should add to it. Do you think the word gullible is still relevant yeah, today? I got called that yesterday. Oh, I got called that yesterday. Oh, so. no. That's not fair. That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> so you think gullible should still be Definitely. included in the dictionary? Definitely. Yeah. Any thoughts on the dictionary company removing the word gullible from next year's editions? It doesn't really make any sense because it, it wouldn't cost much just to add more pages and add more words. Why would you want to remove? It's like, why would you want to remove That's knowledge? That's what we're trying to find out. We're just getting people's thoughts. It doesn't appear to make any sense whatsoever. That's just a sample of the insanity that you'll find on my YouTube channel. Well, that's Mark Subscribe Dice's latest a... video, which you can see up on Infowars.com. He actually sent me a message after I posted that article, pointing out that this is not the first time that he's gone there and asked people what they think about the word gullible being removed from the dictionary. He's done it before. So it wasn't just those few people you saw in the clip. There were several more in separate video. Also, he went out on the beach and asked people what they thought about the word intelligence being removed from the dictionary and of course in every single example they actually believed him that that was what was happening there's an interesting article on the guardian in relation to this by sandy mann you know trying to get to the bottom of why people appear to be more dumbed down why they appear to be more tuned out of reality despite the fact that the internet has given us basically the world's knowledge base at our fingertips, why do people seem to be dumber, more zombie-like, more zoned out than ever before? Could it be the ubiquitousness of mass entertainment? Sandy Mann argues that constant overstimulation and faster-paced amusements have resulted in attention spans shorter than those of goldfish. And that's been scientifically proven now. Less than eight seconds. Quote, we are hardwired to seek novelty, which produces a hit of dopamine, the feel-good chemical in our brains. As soon as a new stimulus is noticed, 
it is no longer new. And after a while, it bores us. To get that same pleasurable dopamine hit, we seek fresh sources of distraction. So again, it goes to the point of these knowledge-gathering tasks, you know, which, which require intense study over a period of hours, are becoming harder to perform, to perform because people just aren't using those mental muscles. They're beginning to atrophy because people are just constantly distracted by the phone, you know, by watching the next two-minute YouTube clip, by whatever. They mentally can't sit down and let a, a significant amount of information wash over them to actually absorb it. They can't do it anymore because their brains have atrophied because they're so used to being distracted every eight seconds their attention spans are now less than a goldfish. So what is the consequence? I mean, people don't absorb enough information. They absorb a little bit of everything, which is so superficial, it's completely meaningless. Which is why, as Mark Dice has proven time and time again, people no longer know basic facts about their own environment, about their own history, about their own freedoms, but they probably know everything about Beyonce. We are back. It's the final segment of this fourth hour of the Alex Jones Show Overdrive. And we've got huge savings on InfoWars Life Select. Four-week food supply. You can save $89 right now at InfoWarsStore.com. 140 servings of storable food, drinks, and snacks for 28 days. The elite is preparing. They're buying their luxury underground bunkers. They're getting their storable food, their water. So why shouldn't you at least make some preparations for the same thing? Of course, if nothing happens, then you just eat the food and you save on your bills at the grocery store anyway. So it's a win-win and you've got massive savings right now on InfoWars Life Select. $89 off the four-week supply special. So check it out right now at InfoWarsStore.com. Just getting into the uh, ubiquitousness of mass entertainment, the internet, smartphones, and how this is dumbing us down because, of course, we're being constantly distracted. One of those distractions, as Alex has talked about at length today, and he's been attacked for it, is Beyonce. Now, this is a truly dreadful human being who is hurting black people. This is a soulless political prostitute. She constantly hijacks these poisonous divisive cultural narratives for profit. We saw it with the whole feminism gig, even though her husband, Jay-Z, has got the most misogynistic lyrics imaginable. You know, he cheats on her. But of course, she's a big feminist, she's a big icon, not because she gives a damn about women's rights. I've never heard her talk once about female genital mutilation in the Middle East, about female drivers being treated as terrorists in Saudi Arabia, no, it's all about the completely fraudulent myths that can be blamed on the non-existent Western patriarchy. You know, the rape culture that doesn't exist, the manspreading, all the fallacious nonsense that feminists make up while ignoring we real human rights, real women's rights issues. So, of course, she's come out with this new music video, which is basically riot chic. It's timed perfectly to cash in on this divisive, Black Lives Matter movement, which, if you will recall, is based on their ideological inspiration, is on the FBI's most wanted domestic terrorist list, Asata Shakur. She's a convicted cop killer. So it's no surprise that the more radical fringe elements of this movement have killed cops as part of Black Lives Matter re revenge attacks, as we saw in New York City a couple of Christmases ago with Ishmael Brinsley, They've plotted to bomb police stations and they've openly marched down the street in their hundreds calling for dead cops. We played that video before. So now Beyonce is cashing in on that divisiveness with this riot chic video. Of course, the mainstream media has been in the can for that narrative the whole time. You know, Time magazine in, de in defense of looting after Ferguson, they've made it into something acceptable and it's incredibly harmful to black people because it's teaching them you don't need to work hard, you don't need to be intelligent, you don't need to concentrate on your education, you don't need to concentrate on building a business, you just need to be full of grievance and blame white people for everything and riot and burn down your own communities. 
And now Beyonce is feeding into that narrative, which is very odd because as little as six years ago, she was marching alongside riot police during her 2010 Grammy performance. So again, complete hypocrisy. She flip-flops from one narrative to the next simply to cash in, simply to exploit these divisive cultural narratives. Now even Obama has come out and said that Black Lives Matter activists should stop yelling at people. So even Obama now is has had a backlash against BLM. But that's going to wrap it up for the fourth hour. Check out the radio show 11 to 2 tomorrow and InfoWars nightly news tonight. Breaking news at InfoWars.com.